Hello everyone. Before we get started on this week's episode, just a quick word that YouTube in all its infinite wisdom has decided that some of the Die Party games are now not suitable for advertising. It doesn't mean a whole lot for the content. I'm not going to censor the videos in any way. But if you'd like to lend your support so that Die Party can continue to grow, please check out the Patreon or subscribe on the Twitch channel. Enjoy the episode. Hello everyone, welcome back finally to the next episode of Dime Party Abyss, a sometimes weekly uh, uh, Hollow Earth Expedition role-playing game. Um, sometimes weekly. Uh, it's been a while since we last played, um, so let's, let's go around and see what everyone's been up to. Uh, Drummer Boy, hey man, it's been What's a while up? since I've seen your face, what's going on? Ah, uh, just same old, same old. Lots of music. That's pretty much it. The Abyss thing is on Spotify and iTunes and all the places now. I uploaded a YouTube video earlier as well. Mm. About because some people just like put on YouTube for music. It's yeah. almost it's it's a catch-all service almost. Mm -hmm. So it's up on YouTube as well. Nice. And other than that, I am. Uh, it was announced a while ago, so I think I could talk about it. Roll Twenty is bringing back their podcast. So I'm doing their intro or jingle for that. Oh, so that's Wait, what, what, I'm they, what are they? What do they talk about on that podcast? Hey man, Dungeons and Dragons. Might as well just fucking play it if you're gonna talk about it, right? Well, like Roll Twenty is not just D and D. It's like all the other systems, and then I like know. we're using it. I use it literally every single day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think they're gonna like they're gonna talk about D and D obviously because mm -hmm. that's kind of their bread and butter. But they're probably also gonna start bringing in like marketplace talk like you can buy your tokens and whatever your little art stuff so they'll probably have artists on there and they'll probably talk about the other systems that are coming up and releasing new on on roll 20 like because there there's a couple games that are just releasing on roll 20 first mm. and then like going to other stuff separately right and roll 20 does have like a pretty substantial twitch presence as far as like tabletop digital like a digital tabletop company goes yep it's them and D, D next pretty much so but right. they're doing their podcast again so i don't know what it what it all will contain but it will contain some of my music for the intro so that's cool yeah no that that's uh congratulations on the gig i guess yeah thanks but not yeah that's it so i guess Everyone wants to know what Sheepy's up to. So Injuring happens. myself in weird and wonderful ways. Mm. As a British man, you're entitled to your self-injury. Yes. Uh, no, I have... Um... Oh, I played a game called Riot Civil Unrest. Is that that Riot Simulator? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. interesting. Uh, as a game, it's confusing. I'm not sure how I did uh you basically have like the rioters and the police and you have to like fight for control over a certain area and like push them out using like smoke grenades and all these things do you get to play uh, as both side yeah yeah mm, okay and they they play differently which is cool i guess you know a little bit of variety in that type of game is quite good um i tried being peaceful and a lot of my rioters got shot and ran away. I tried being aggressive and a lot lost... of your rioters got shot and ran away. Yeah, and we also lost public opinion. I'm not sure how the game wants me to win, which is very difficult when I'm well, doing I mean you just it. that's the thing, you don't win. Right. I mean that's how I play all my other games. Yeah. Just um, don't win. <laughs> just don't win. Huh. So much easier. Hmm. Uh, oh, I did do uh, an interview with the devs of Caves of Cod with uh, Fuzzy Fuzzy Freaks okay. recently, which was uh, very interesting. They got talking about Dune, you know, the the film from the what, when when was Dune released? Like seventies, eighties? Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's safe to say it's ongoing. Oh, yeah, they're it's making a new series. one too. Right? 
They're yeah, really I've, I've heard they're redoing the original movie miniseries thing. I mm. think they're re filming that. 65. What? what? It, it was 65? Did they even have yeah, TV the, back then? The, the novel, the novel. The novel. No, they yeah. just had no. the movie and no one could watch it. They just, people would buy the VHS and sit on the shelves and be like, yep, got mm. that. Eventually, well, technology yeah. will catch up and we'll be able to enjoy this. <laughs> film, the film is 84. I, yeah, I, I watched the 84 film and I was lost as soon as it started. Although, one of the best things I loved about I did love about it was, um, I have watched it now. Mm. One of the things I loved about it was the whisper narration. I, every single bit of narration in that, like that isn't out loud. Even the out loud stuff is just like someone really close to a microphone, just whispering. I loved it. Well, they probably had to um, record it in a basement in the middle of the night because they were running <laughs> late. You know, like yeah, yeah. They were trying to make ASMR a thing. I think it was you... good that they didn't just do straight up narration. They kind of, everyone had their own little monologue moments of yeah. them narrating their thoughts. Yeah, it was like proper inner monologue stuff, you know, yeah. while the, while they were doing a scene. It's like, I wonder if this person is on my side. Maybe. It's super controversial too. Like that, that choice polarizes people hard. Yeah. So w why did we talk about doing <laughs> Uh Because they got talking about it on, on while well, we were talking on Caves of Cards. And uh, I mentioned everyone else was like super, you know, saying how much they loved it. And I was like, never seen or read anything to do with Dune. So they, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the main topic of conversation with Dune. So I'm going to go see Star Wars next week with a person who's never seen any Star Wars movies. Interesting. The, the, the one releasing? Yeah, the new one, yeah. And Are you sure I, you're picking the right staging off point? Like, is this the place you want to start them off on this adventure? Yeah, it's someone else's girlfriend, right? Like, yeah, you know. Like, I think you have a moral obligation, it's, though. No, I don't. I don't got to do shit. <laughs> as long as you do I, not sit beside them, so you don't have to answer every question that comes up. I, I recently watched rewatched The Force Awakens and came to the conclusion that I, aside from the Clone Wars, I prefer the prequels. I hope they just don't remake all the movies. Anyway, um, I guess Null Speak is next. Yay. I hear, I hear you've been working hard, diligently, in fact, acquiring new talents and whatnot. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, um, you know, in my world, basically, we're we're starting to talk about the announcement plan for the game, which is a big deal for me. Um, and uh, other than that, just sort of talking to folks about spinning up my next D&D campaign because I can't fucking stop. Nice. What do, so what's, what's the big thing about the new D&D campaign? I mean, for me, it's real simple. It's going from um, running official modules like Curse of Strahd to completely custom content. Mm. So it's a, it's a mental hurdle, but I'm looking forward to it. See... Uh, it's, I've been thinking the past couple of days about D&D &D and I'm like, man, I would love to run a game where the players have to go down a humongous hole that in the earth. And that's what they're exploring. Just a humongous vertical hole, right? And it's all like climbing gear and monsters of the deep and shit like that. I, I don't know. That seems pretty cool to me. I might know. Matt that. Colville won't shut up about night below. You could probably adapt that. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that uh... an old old module that uh, was really popular, and and uh, he he, you know, his whole channel like he talks about it constantly. Hmm. Um, I've never personally run it, but it's it's about you know the underdark and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, so you could do. It. Got maps. It's very nice. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I guess Doc, my man. Oh, sorry. No, is that all you wanted to talk about or like uh i mean like i say you know I, a lot of my stuff is uh hush uh, hush yeah yes need to hush, know hush. basis romanticize yep, yep. Yeah. we hired a new guy that we hired a guy who worked on a uh, dishonored um uh to help shore up the uh well some crazy features that we're adding to the game and and so mm -hmm. our team is six now it's a big deal we're we're psyched um <laughs> I know my, my world is boring because I really can't describe the details, but we're super happy to have him on. Awesome. Uh, okay, Doc. What up, Yo. dude? 
How you doing? How you doing? It's been a while hey, since we've doing? had you on a dive hardy game. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I can't remember the last one. Actually, I think it was this. I'm pretty sure ago. it was this. Yeah. Yeah. Before I went on my honeymoon. Yeah. Um, so I I checked out a game that I think you'd probably find pretty cool. Oh yeah, what's over that? The last week, it's uh, Deep Sky Derelicts. Think, I think darkest dark. Except instead of going into crypts and caves, you're exploring abandoned spaceships. And there's a little bit of deck building in your your character gear. Oh shit. Okay. That actually that looks pretty good. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you, you had it's me a deck cool. builder, it's, man. I'm <laughs> it's it's short. There's not a huge amount uh, to it right now. I think there's like three. Wait, one C publishes this? How the fuck are they still alive? <laughs> okay, uh, you know what? This is awesome. I might buy this. That seems yeah, pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I just looked at it and I saw like I got the the UI and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll play this game. <laughs> Putting it on my list right now. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, awesome. I figured man. it was something you would. Uh, it, it's up your alley. Uh -huh. Nice uh okay cool well um i guess graham you're the last one that we need to touch base with what's been going on man how you doing i've been doing good i uh i bought a video game <sighs> no what is it it's the most grim thing that you can imagine oh god some fucking Paradox Interactive thing. What, what is that? A Game Boy Double Color game? Game Boy Advance. What game was it? 007 Everything or Nothing for the Game Boy Advance. I think I fucking had that as a kid. I ha That's where I learned the word epiphany. I'm pretty sure that was the game that taught me the word epiphany. And I remember that because I was like, Mom, what's epiphany mean? It's like, oh, it's a good idea. I'm like... Why wouldn't they just say that then? <laughs> oh god, damn! Right. Is that the top-down one as well? Yeah. Yep. Metric. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that is the one. Uh, so, what was it called? 007 All or Nothing? Everything or nothing. Everything or nothing. But in any case, um, I've got some some things I'm building: yeah. pinball machine, flamethrower. Um, you're building a flamethrower? Is it a pinball machine flamethrower like mix? So like you get a high score and just those are two, those are two separate projects. Damn it. Okay. So you maybe considered maybe combining them. Modular that can connect like Legos. <laughs> you got you, there's something there's something to be said about a man who just decides one day to build a flamethrower. <laughs> can you even do that? Is that even legal? Yeah, you can go to Home Depot and buy a flamethrower. Surprisingly, yes, flamethrowers are legal in America. Probably because they're not really actually all that dangerous, like, except to the user. But anyway, that's me. Nice. All right, cool. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while since we played this game, but um, let's do a fine how do you do and talk about uh, what you guys want to do for character expansions. Do you have any expenditures that you'd like to go over? One more session. <laughs> One more session. You know what? It's it's uh, it's been a while. Let's let's remind me what everyone is buying right now. You mean what we're saving for? Yeah, what you're saving up for. Uh, I got mine. I wanted to increase willpower. I think it was. Will and I got it last session. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to pull up the book. Okay. There we go. 118. Okay. Um, what about everyone else? Do you remember what yeah. you're getting? Yeah, I'm saving up. I mean, I just bought that Guardian thing. Oh, yeah, saving that's up. right. The uh, the talent that lets you um, protect other right. people, right, with your uh, intelligence. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. That's the one. I'm saving to raise a primary stat to five, which costs 25 points. Yep, yep. I 
I want to have a little more of a look. Yeah. Like proper look in at what I can get, and then I'll I'll decide. Mm. Um, I don't have that much anyway, uh, in terms of XP. So. I mean, if we get six, I can get something next time. Yep. 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 All right. Okay. Uh, Drama, what were you gonna buy? Uh, I'm just like pumping points into Meth and Legend. Other than that, I might be looking at a new talent once I hit 15. But okay. Still, still have to look at that stuff. Alrighty. Well, uh, last time we uh, played, uh, you guys were uh, made your way down to the ocean. Well, I say ocean, the triangular ocean uh, that is at the very southern part of the inner part of this world, uh, I guess. Um, the ocean is very vast. It's very large. Um, and in the distance you spied a, uh, a couple of, um, uh, a couple of, uh, landmarks, right? That's, that's what I remember. You, you found some landmarks and you were able to sort of, uh, I guess sort of triangulate because, um, Gideon had a vision of, uh, um, uh, a city emerging from underwater, um, from his own perspective. And, uh, I believe that you in the distance you also saw a shipwreck uh, against a cliff. Uh, half of it was hanging over a cliff, uh, Uncharted style. Um, and I think that's where we left off, right? So. Yeah, and we saw a mountain with a uh, eagle. with a hawk yeah, or eagle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. Like uh, a bird. Figured face, we would go but... there, but but then everybody was like, "Ooh, shipwreck." <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, what do? I mean, half of the shipwreck is on the top of a cliff, right? So I'd mm -hmm. probably be heading for that. Yeah, you're you're basically on the same level as the top of the cliff, sort of thing. Like the ocean. I mean, it's it's the only thing that stands out, so it may as well have a big glowing quest marker over it. Mm -hmm. Well, last time I successfully grafted a sixth finger to my hand. Um, successfully. How's that going? Um. Well, it's about no time has passed in the game since then so it's about the same where it was last time so i mean it's on there and it's not rancidifying no it's not it's it's there's blood going through it you can't yeah, move yeah. it but and you also don't have any nerve endings in it yeah there's no bone there's no nerve ending it doesn't do anything i mean there is bone in there but it's just no it's not connecting to it and stuff so yeah um and yes that's that's pretty much where we left off so did we? Uh, did any of us like learn about the whole vision flying through the air? What thing? Did yeah, you... I had to um, essentially sort of retroactively narrate it aloud so that uh, Francis could cross-reference the things that I saw with the journal. Right. right. Oh yes, he did. Do He's that. been making his own notes in it now, so he is he is the Nathan Drake in this situation. He's like margins, you know. Oh shit, we're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect drawings of like puzzles and stuff. Yeah. So I'm not at this point, like I'm looking in the direction of the mountain um, because that's what seems important to me. But there's obviously a cool shipwreck that most of the rest of the party is <laughs> heading towards. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to figure out like when in time is this from? Because my good academics history is just like my history senses are tingling. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. You can try to ID the That's ship. Actually, a good point. What kind of ship is it? Are we talking like old sails and? Um... Yep, old sails. Um, a wooden construction. At least that's what you can see from this distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Assume there's going to be dynamite on there. Explodes into Nazis. Everyone roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's actually a U-boat! <laughs> that's, that's almost what I was expecting. As you approach, you see the giant swastikas on the side. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we're going over there then. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I'm... At this point, Charles is following and seeing what's going on. Okay. Yeah. He, 
you know, I've claimed, I've claimed, I've already claimed uh, the underworld. Uh, I'm just waiting to fight Hades now. That's true. Um, so, who's leading the party down to the uh, the ship? I think, I guess, I would be. You're probably the most interested, so you probably started walking and we followed. Yeah. Okay. So you plus know, we gotta we gotta hold you out front to attract danger. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I am the danger magnet, so ten foot pole That's... in all directions away from Francis uh, at all times. Uh, I was actually reading the danger magnet thing. Apparently, I'm supposed to get style points every time I get in danger when it's not my doing. Yes, when it's not your doing. Um, That's super OP, actually. Yeah, but it also means that I can fucking at 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 random throw whatever the hell I want at you, and it has to be dangerous to your group. Otherwise, it's not danger magnet. Yep. Um, so as long as it's threatening, you know, we'll see how we go. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys uh, make your way down to the uh, the the cliff line, I guess, and then start following it along to the um, to the boat. Uh, you go from like uh, plain savannah style down to like, I guess, um, more rocky uh, sort of cliff territory i don't know how you'd describe it other than like yeah like just sort of like a rocky ground so uh interspersed with like little pools of uh water um and if you you know you know lick it or whatever um it is uh salt water and you do see uh like um dried salt in a lot of the um the pools uh where the where water obviously used to be um carcasses of fish um and other sea creatures uh some uh you know stuff you guys have never seen before um you know probably akin to say deep sea deep sea creatures and that sort of stuff sorry let me mute my phone real quick um and um you know that as you get closer and closer to the ship um you start seeing uh like coral like dried dead coral um everywhere um and uh, the the rock the 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 jagged rocks start getting a lot smoother as well um, as you get them come closer to the cliff face. That is, uh, if you walk along the actual cliff, uh, there's no like hard edge and then straight down. It's more like a like it sort of curves into a cliff because of how uh, um, it's almost like the erosion on the rock is so great in this area that um, it there is no jagged edges to this cliff it's all smooth all the way down to at least to the water's uh, level hmm. i definitely collect some salt yeah no um if you if you test it or you know run do whatever you can like rub between your fingers taste it or whatever it is uh pure salt um from the ocean um does it taste like sea salt yeah it tastes like sea salt yeah As expected. But uh, if you wanted to, you know, we don't really need to go over it because I assume you're doing it. But if you wanted to, you know, dry your meat in a more, you know, salted fashion, you can with this sort of stuff. Um, not that it matters, but, you know, I assume that some of you might collect some of that for that reason. Or, you know, well, maybe for medical needs or something along those lines. Like this sort of stuff wouldn't be too bad for that stuff. It's not me heavy and I can't carry hardly anything. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. I I don't bother oh, yeah. preserving meat. I just kill something else. <laughs> yeah, well. I like it. Mm -hmm. As you make your way over to the actual boat itself, um, there's a couple of things that you see. I, I would like to get um, just a perception check uh, across the board from everyone. Um, just so I can, I can get an idea of what exactly you see as you come up to it. Regular five? Yeah, regular five, yeah. I don't like that the default is four. Holy shit. Charles is oper operating optimally currently, apparently. You rolled five dice and got five successes? Yeah. Yeah, three tens. <laughs> well, th that's all your tens for the session, so good job yep. using them. Yay! Um, all right, so uh, I don't know whether or not Charles would pay attention to uh, his underfoot. Um, no, nope. but, uh, Francis, uh, Jackson, 
Um, as you come closer, uh, you do see um, a large number of uh, human bare footprints uh, in the salt around this uh, as you get closer to the ship. In fact, the closer you get, the, um, the more footprints actually uh, show up as well. Mm. Um, and you probably stop and gesture to hide. Like, do you know how fresh these are? Like, gesture to the footprints in the, in the salt? Uh, well, um... uh, before you go and do any more rolls, I mean, let me explain what else you guys see. Sure. Um, the ship itself uh, is very, very uh, eroded. Um, almost like, I don't know if you guys at this time would know it, but it's almost like um, when they disperse a crowd using f water, um, with that sort of pressure on the outside of the ship, um, it appears that it's just sort of like, like if, if the ship was like upright, right? So that you're looking at it and the, you know, it's flat. Um, it looks like it's been eroded up the ship if that makes any sense. Um, so the water, like someone sprayed so, a really powerful hose something from underneath. upwards, yeah, mm. into the ship, and it looks like it's eroded upwards. Um, okay. uh, the, you know, the uh, markings on the ship are pretty much, like, if there was a name there, it's not there anymore. Um, and uh, in terms of well, what's on the actual, like, uh, sail itself, um, um it doesn't say but um it's a red skeleton no it's a it's, bleeding mug no nothing like that i'm just gonna real quickly just uh give me a sec i want to make sure that i get this right uh oh okay you see um uh there it's a very very large ship um uh it, it has um uh God, I want to say that uh, the half that you see hanging off um, has the equivalent of seven sails um, on it. Um, with uh, the main mast being on this side of the ship, it actually uh, goes about uh, two, uh, like a hundred meters up in the air, basically, um, with sails coming down from it um, on that side. Um, you do see a, uh, a very tattered American flag uh, being flown on the front as well um and that's that's all you see in terms of like markings or names or anything like that so current day america or like like circle of stars america one second i will find out i'm not familiar with my flags um like i guess confederate i'm also canadian i only know like a very little bit about this uh, like, okay, it has... It's a 34 star flag. Okay. Can I make an academics history roll to try and get more out of it? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so this will be difficulty probably... 8, I want to say. Right. 2? 2, okay. Yeah, um, so there's a lot of ships um, uh, in history that have gone, that, you know, were destroyed uh, for whatever reason, went missing, that sort of stuff. Um, but a ship this size, um, judging from what you know about it, uh, it mm -hmm. is a, um, a brigantine. Um, so it's there's not a lot of ships that were like that. Um, and uh, you judge that it's probably the uh, Mary, Mary Cast uh, Castelli, uh, which is a ship that uh, apparently uh, was lost in somewhere in the Atlantic Oceans around uh, the 1870s. Can we discern the ship's purpose? The cargoes are cargo in here. Uh, it was yeah, it was a cargo ship. Is there cargo where we are right now? No, nothing here. I'm still walking to the ship, by the way. If I like, if I know that it's sunk, 
in the Atlantic sometime and we came out of a portal in Jerusalem, like my, my map that I'm trying to draw, like the reverse of, and I'm like, oh shit, I have like, it's a very large area, but like if this was in the Atlantic, we're like a very long way away from the point on the surface that we came in on. So like, just trying to like figure out if the, if the geography inside hollow earth is this reverse, like an inverted version of the surface. Yeah. Um, going through the actual, um, the, the journal, uh, what you've, there's no noting about like, you know, trying to align any of that up. Um, Mm -hmm. but what you could, uh, what you could surmise is that, um, if they, uh, when they left, um, they came out in a place that they had no idea where they would go from. Like if, if you were to like, you know, you know how you'd go into a sewer and then you just walk and then your mental mind would be like, okay, if I come up at this manhole, I think I'm going to be on this street. And then you come mm-hmm. up and it's in a completely different area that you have no idea how you got there. Yeah. It's, they little, the it's not usually a problem I have when crawling around in sewers. Yeah. It's, it would be a little like that. Right. Um, from what, you, known, from what you can tell which coast, which coast it came from for like American coast or from like a European direction. Uh, could you say that again? Would I have known like from my history role, maybe not cause it's so low, like where, where it would have launched from? Like if it's an American ship, mm-hmm. is it coming from the American coast or is it coming from the European African coast? Uh, well, it was, um, so if it's, the, a car, if it's a cargo ship, I'm thinking maybe like European African, but I'm not sure. Uh, it was on its way to Portugal. Okay. Since they drew attention to the uh, footprints in the sand, I'll sort of do the superfluous pulp cocking of the submachine gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kneel down, look at them, not really knowing, you know, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know, um, but I'm, Curious. I'd probably do the same, the crouch down and then like touch one of them and touch it to my tongue and hmm. I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, it's salty. I'm not sure what that's going to give you, but, um, it's, it's how you track. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's how poppy people track. Give me one of those poppy people tracking abilities. Uh, yeah. Let me difficulty, right difficulty seven. Uh, so that's actually a f- six for me because I have this specialized twice. Okay. Is that special speciality? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Um, okay. That right. Yes. That makes sense. Uh, so the second one, it does explode and it is at difficulty six. So uh, two successes. Yeah. Um, what you can surmise, you, you don't know how long they've been here for. But you can surmise that they are a variety of different people. Um, and uh, now that you look a little deeper, um, there is dragging marks on the ground as well as uh, holes in the ship made by uh, like spearheads, arrows, that sort of stuff. Um, I'll probably like look around like off in the distance and be like, well... It never actually seems to rain here. I don't see any clouds. So these could have been here for a thousand years for all we know. Yeah, it's true. Is there any way, like, is there holes in the ship or is the ship generally pretty together? It's pretty together. Um, but it is, it is uh, like, very, like, the wood, You could, if you tried hard enough, you could probably force your way in. Yeah. Because Especially it's like, is with it, a buffalo gun. A how, gun yeah. how like perilous is it on the edge of the cliff? Like if we were to try to force our way in, would it go over or? I mean, it's, no, it's, no, it's going by the sides of it. I think it, it's probably pretty, probably pretty there. solid, but yeah. I just didn't make sure. Mm-hmm. So, Although that would be pretty pulpy. It's like a giant ship. And then one of us goes in and, oh no, the weight is unsettled now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on, it's on like the tip of a rock. They're just like, so unless someone's well and like, I, I mean let's say for example you go in the ship right and uh you start unloading like something heavy in the front end it might 
tip then, but like, well, know, I just want to go in very and very go in and look. Yeah, you can, see you could probably go in there pretty easily. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So unless anyone stopped me, uh, I've walked straight towards. Uh, the ship. One second there, Charlie boy. Hmm? And and I'm just going to fire into the air. Okay. Easy way to see if there's anybody inside. Interesting. Okay. It kills a person on the other side of the hollow yeah, The bullet just like sails off and hits someone. Yeah. Just hits a bird. <laughs> um, are, yeah, you, okay. are you sure that's wise old, wise old chap? Cut to Woodbury, who somehow made it inside. <laughs> yes. I, <it's> him. Stunned, <laughs> like after he says, are you sure that's wise old chap? Stunned. I like turn fully around and look at him like, I agree with Charles. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, just can't believe. It. So, are you firing? Have you fired? What's the deal there? Yeah, I mean, no, that's the easiest way to find out if there's people inside. Is make or a lot anywhere of noise outside. near us, to be honest. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, you fire. It's loud, as you'd imagine. Um, I don't know if you're expecting to hear what something, uh, like like footsteps or something like that, um, but uh, it's a very large ship, so if there were people inside of it, um, you would have a hard time hearing if they reacted to it just now. Well, you said that there were arrows and things stuck to. The, like, no, no, no. There were. The ship, right? There's like holes. Like someone, like like let's say someone threw a spear and then took the spear out of the wall. Right. Yeah, um, kind of a punk puncture. Yeah, I mean, like a puncture, this, yeah. this indicates to me that there's natives nearby, and we all know how much they fear firearms, boomsticks, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then, if that's good, Mr. Hyde, I'm going to. Yeah, so you fire your gun, you wait a little bit, expecting to hear an avalanche of people or something, right? Or like, the, you know, like the Indian call or some bullshit like that, I imagine, it's going yeah. through your mind. Nothing, nothing comes out. Um, but, uh, you know, you can take from that what you will. Right. Well, I'm going to walk to the ship then. Well, that's, that looks like an ambush to me then if they're not attacking. So off you go. I walk to the ship. Okay. I mean, you're at the edge of the ship. Are you trying to go into the ship? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Anyone there? I, I watch. Are you just banging yeah, on the I, outside? I think we're all. I think we're all yeah. staying a safe distance away, just watching. So, I'm, I'm so banging, this... I'm banging on the ship. Okay, it's not like there's a door there for you to go in or nothing. It's a, no, it's just a banging on the ship. Hole of a ship. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, Charles is in the drawing. Like I'm drawing the ship, and there's like a little man just knocking on the ship. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm okay. So you don't get a response if that's what you're asking for. Nobody answers. Well, I, I asked if anyone was there, and I wait for okay. a response. Yeah. And then I turn around. I don't think anyone's in there. Okay. Well, fair enough. Give the thumbs up. Well, that, I'll, off you go then. Yeah, I guess. Where? where? C climb aboard. It's all yours I now. Up, I, I climb aboard. Okay. Uh, it's a pretty big ship and it's dry docks right now, so it's not like it's floating and you can access it or anything like that. Um, I can't climb up it? You can. Maybe yeah. I'm just letting yeah. you know that it's not it's not like you just, you know, climb the rope ladder that's Oh no, right no. There. I, it's, I <laughs> assume that it's it's a little bit of a task to, to climb on. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna make you roll for that though, if you spend enough time doing it. If you're not in a rush, right? You're not trying to No, no. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you, you eventually climb. Um uh, how much of a skilled climber are you? Um, like, is this an easy thing for you to do, or is this something that you sort of struggle with? I'd say I probably struggle with it a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know, he, he's I'm probably bones. boarded a ship or two before, though. It's it's probably not something easy for him, but he's done it enough that he's not going to hurt himself. I mean, in my younger days, yes, but um, you know, well, bones aren't as young as they used to be. <laughs> okay. I mean, you climb. Actually, on... it turns out Woodbury was always at the top, pulling you up, and you were just <laughs> hanging. <laughs> yeah, so you get up on top of the ship, um, and you know there is some very old, 
dried rope rigging up here if you wanted to throw that down to make it easier for everyone to climb up. Um, um, it's very old and very moldy, but um, it could probably support the weight of a couple of people. I mean, there's no point if they all sits, you know, sat back investigating footprints unless anyone's well, come well, up no, to we're it. just waiting for you to get ambushed. I'm, I'm coming up to the ship. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let it down for, for Francis. Yeah, it's like, um, you know how, uh, it's like a, it's like a, almost like a, a net rigging to climb up the mast and stuff like that. Um, it's a little like that, but like it seemed to be cut off or broken with the, when, when the mast broke. Um, so you could climb up that pretty easily. No problems. I'll shut back to Solomon. Like there's some good mold growing on here. If you'd like a sample and just climb up, make some penicillin. With the gunshots and all the shouting, I sort of like to sidelong to Jessica. I say, um, I know we managed to sneak up on you and your band rather stealthily, but if you're going to calibrate your expectations, this is more how it's been. <laughs> like, just indicating like all the noise that we're making. Well, the first time she saw us, there was a grenade involved. So to, the ball. to be fair, that was after we got the drop on them, though. You know, like we there there was a. Uh, to I didn't fair, get the drop. We, on. we oh, had they captured me. We had about thirty soldiers at our backs that you managed to get through, and on top of that, we were digging in the earth. You could have been walking around with a bull, and you, we wouldn't have heard you. Wait, wow! Well, his name is Charles. Have you met him? Can I break a pri priceless piece of china? And like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's just the sound of something <laughs> breaking from on the ship. <laughs> Damn it! Ha. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, I, I, I guess we're investigating the ship now, huh? Is that what everyone's doing? Everyone's climbing up? Only Francis yeah. is... Well, I'm for sure climbing up. Okay. Uh, so you end up... Whoever else wants to go up, Charles and Francis are up there. Uh, I'm staying outside with my gun trained on the doctor. I'll st I'll stay there because oh yeah, don't clap yeah. Mm -hmm. One might imagine I have quite a bit of difficulty climbing anything. <laughs> well, yeah. they will need a guard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you go up, um, and you're walking around the top of the deck. There is like you know the the way to get into the hull if you wanted to do that. Uh, there's a lot of um, very moldy. Um, like, uh, like the wheel is all like all the wood up here is very moldy and old. And like, if you wanted to, you could break it pretty easily, um, without too much trouble. There's probably like that shot, like grabbing one of the nubs of the wheel and just like, yeah. Yeah. Just like turning just it to see if it is. moves, but then you just break the wheel off instead. Um, there's like the, the two, the two knobs that I'm wrenching on just like come apart. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, there's there's not like loose instruments or anything or barrels or whatever up here. But like all of that stuff is gone, uh, as you'd imagine. Um, uh, there's a, if there's a way to get into the hull, um, there is. There. Yep, there definitely is. Uh, it is open already. Um, the doors are pulled back and are exposed. Like if you imagine opening opening them up with the door la laying on the floor of the uh, uh, hull. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, there is a, uh, a small staircase going down. I'll just tell Charles I'm, I'm heading down. Well, uh, follow me if you want. Why don't I go first, old boy? I don't think your magic is going to help us here. I don't have any magic. I have a feeling he got me and Gideon mixed up. <laughs> No, you're you're Francis. Francis the Great. Oh, oh wow, deep cut. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, we Shall get a, we we get a picture of uh, him, Francis the Great, and uh, you know Woodbury, uh, like I don't know, fighting the remaining Nazis on top, uh, and he sneezes. He's like, oh, I think someone's talking about me, boy. <laughs> Um, Shall we? Yeah, yeah let's. All right, so you head down uh, the stairs of this uh, ship. Uh, the only real light that you have is from the hole. 
uh, that you came mm. down as well as uh, small uh, cracks uh, from the floors above you basically of, of light uh, as you go in um, uh, within the hole itself there is um, uh, a very uh, sort of irony smell uh, um, you know this uh, Charles pretty easily um, it is the smell of uh, dried blood um, uh, as you go deeper into the hull uh, you start to see um, signs of uh, I guess uh, blood and uh, drag marks and um, the deeper you go, the more frequently it, 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 it shows up. Um, and uh, no bodies, though, surprisingly. Um, uh, but there is signs of, like, uh, someone... Like, you see, like, a blood splatter of, like, um, uh, like, a guy... Like, maybe he was sitting down and leaning his back against a wall. And you can see, like, his back imprinted on the wall from, like, blood and stuff like that. Uh, the deeper you go, you start to find like um, uh, arrows and feathers and spears and stuff like that on the ground uh, covered in blood. But again, no corpses. Um, uh, there is uh, some hair though um, and um, like clothing and stuff like that. Like, uh, like loincloths and things along those lines. Uh, leather clothing, um, stuff made out of fur. Um, but it's all, it's all covered in blood, basically. Um, and there is uh, a, a room uh, deep down here uh, that has a barred door in it. Um, like it's barred from the inside. Hmm. Like if you try and open it, it doesn't move. Um, Kick it? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll kick it. All right. But what? Let's get, to roll anything yeah, or? let's get a just just I want to get an idea of how your uh, your strength here. So just go ahead and click the strength. Remember, strength gets multiplied uh, by two, and then you um when you roll so, strength one. I don't need to change anything though. No, 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 I, you don't. No. Okay. Uh, so it should just be five difficulty. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you kick in the door. Um. The wood uh, that was, you know, holding the... Like, it takes a couple of tries, right? Um, yeah. Like, I like the idea that you kick the door in first, um, but you kick the bottom part of it, and that gives away real easily. But then the door doesn't move, so then you shoulder charge it a couple of times, and you hear the actual, like, the bark that's black blocking the door uh, breaking, um, and it breaks in uh, pretty easily. Okay. What, what like, do we have in there? Just like pat him on the shoulder and like kind of a little bit and scoosh out of the way so I can stand in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, inside the room, there is um, uh, two bodies uh, on the ground. Um, uh, and they're... It's, it's kind of weird. They're covered in like uh, blood and excrement. Um and uh they appear to be just normal uh caucasian um uh people uh their clothing is very primitive um and they have a lot of tattoos as well so these don't look like americans no but they are caucasian they're not like um yeah indian they're, they're not the like people that. that i was expecting to find on this ship no no yeah no no definitely not um they are not uh, sailors or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Have have we at this point explored the ship completely? Uh, or the half that we're here. Yeah, um, there is. Um, uh, can I get a uh, perception from everyone real quick? Yeah, uh, the the uh, sorry, uh, just uh, yeah, Francis and Charles. Yeah, five as usual. Yes, please. Six. Oh yeah, uh, Francis. Uh, you don't see it, but you hear it. the The sound of a bow being pulled back uh, into a taut position. Uh, 
it's, it's almost as ominous as the shotgun cocking. It's something that you'll know it as soon as you hear it. Yeah. Is this an instance where I can get a style point for being a danger magnet? No. Fuck. <laughs> but I'll just like, when I hear that, I'll just like, I won't move. I'll like make a quick glance at Charles and like, kind of like raise my hands for a second. It's like, I, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the bodies. I don't see that. that. I'll just like make a quick like <clears throat> or like a cough or something. What's up? Um, a a man will uh, step out from uh, the shadows. Uh, he is very tall, uh, very lean. His um, fingers are wrapped around a bow, and he has the arrow pulled back. Uh, Basically, his hair is done up in a uh, a tight bun uh, uh, up on his head, and it's basically it's you look at this man, um, and he seems a little off, just a smidgen off, um, like maybe his features are longer than than what you'd expect to see on a on a human being. Uh, like his face is a little longer, like kind of stretched in a, in a, a, a vertical way, and. You know, his arms are a little longer than you'd expect them to be. Um, and uh, his torso uh, is, he's, he's, you know, uh, a fit individual. Um, but his, he has basically like, um, like if there was like an, an athlete body, uh, he would have that. But it's, it's definitely like his rib cage is further up his uh, chest than you'd imagine it to be. Um, mm-hmm. And he's he's basically just wearing a lawn cloth, uh, and um, he sort of uh, he grunts at you. Um, Does he bear any resemblance to a certain friend of ours? I'm sorry. Can you elaborate on that? Is he like, are him and Gideon? Would I see like any immediate like, oh, this is an Atlantean, or like, is this just like? Maybe someone who grew up down here. And oh, like... I see what you're saying. Um, no, uh, there's no like um, immediate resemblance. Um, okay. If that's what you're like asking. The only the only record of like human people that I have here is from Gideon being like, "There's Atlanteans down here. Let's get them. Yeah. Let's get them. Or not, yeah. not get them, but join them. Yeah, it, um, is, that's how he talks now <laughs> for the rest is... of the game he being overtly aggressive or is he just like standing there he's got an arrow pulled he, back in his him. or like, like overtly aggressive. does anyone like it's it's does anyone have any skills like with empathy or anything like that? i've got an empathy yes but we're outside mm. um, i've got i've got empathy rating seven okay did yeah, we hear the um did we hear the the door get kicked in hmm did we hear the subtle twang of the bowstring all the way from outside? Yes. No, I wasn't asking subtle... that. I was just asking if we heard them kick the door in. Oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I imagine We probably would have heard it. Probably. It's a big hollow ship. It would have made a ton of noise, yeah. but it also would have been pretty obvious what it was. We're yeah. very precise. Is it a standard empathy check, like a five? Or is yeah, it just a five, yeah. Just want to see how well you do. Is he, you're not specialized in it, yeah? No. Okay, with a four, yeah, definitely. Um... He seems um, very surprised and very shocked. Um, and if anything, uh, if you were like you're you, with empathy, I assume that you can take you can look at a look at a social uh, problem from a different perspective other than your own. Mm-hmm. Um, from his perspective, you, we're weirdos, dude, and we just kicked a door down. You are strange people um that he has never probably ever encountered before in his life and does he look like the like the bodies yes like, he does. The bodies yeah. Be yeah uh he yes he's also tattooed sorry i should have mentioned that okay um cool. yes so when i notice that i'll be like oh i see what's going on here like i'll keep my hands up and be like not very non-threatening just like ask charles to move out of the way so he can like get in and look at his people because like there might be some sort of like ritual burial stuff. I don't know. Like he might need to see um, his dead. So from what you can tell, uh, he's probably been in this room with them for a very, for a while now. Um, 
he was in the locked room, is it? Yes, he was in the locked so room. Kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. he was in there. Oh, okay. So I'd, I'd just basically like back out of the room and be like, well, whatever. Does he does he follow us? Uh, yeah, yeah, he'll he'll follow you, and he'll sort of like walk up to you, and um, he'll start to like you know, um. He'll 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 sort of uh, like reach out with his foot, um, and he'll sort of like grab if you allow him, he'll grab a hold of your shirt with the foot, and he'll start tugging on it with his foot. Mm -hmm. Fucking monkey people. I'm a little weird out, but I'm like, you got a bow or an arrow aimed at us, so just like go with it, I guess. Do you do do you are you saying this to him? Well, like. I'd probably be like, whoa, whoa, okay. Um, and then just like, if he's pulling me forward, I'm just like, come forward a little bit. Still like, very, like, I'm not, not here to hurt you. Maybe uh, I'll even say that with like, we're not here to hurt you. What is uh, the body language of Charles right now? I want to get an idea of what, what you're doing. It's probably fairly on guard. I've got my stick in my hand. Like, you know, not overtly kind of gripping it like I'm about to unsheath it but ready and if he was to try and grab me I'd pull my sword out okay um, are you uh, wearing any cologne or anything like that Francis? Oh. no what is your bathing ritual in uh, since you've come to Hollowworth? I mean sweat mostly probably mostly just sweat yeah. Like, raptor blood. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we've like any of us have like <laughs> full on bathed by the time we've been here. Are you doing like we, uh, we smell like the home homemade sunblock right now? Yeah, you guys have been walking along a river for a while now, so like you could probably have like horse baths or something like that. You know? Um, yeah, I probably I've, like wash my face and whatever, but I've mm. splashed water on myself. But for a proper bathing experience, I need wood breathe. Okay, so yeah, okay, oh so none of you are deodorized or anything like that, right? No. Okay, uh, just getting an idea here. Um, he, so he'll he'll sort of, um, you know, uh, use his foot. Like, are you wearing any pouches? Do you have a you have your satchel, yeah? Yeah, it's like satchel around my shoulder, and it's kind of like behind me on my hip. So he, he'll grab that with your with his foot and sort of pull at it, tug at it. Uh, you have an opportunity to not let him take it if you'd like. I won't let him take it, but I'm going to like bring it around to the front very slowly and like open it up and like, see, just books. So he'll, he'll like, um, he'll, he'll put the bow down and he'll not down, but he'll like, you know, not have it taught essentially. Yeah. Um, and he'll sort of like, uh, you know, look inside and pull out a, just a book, I guess. Um, and he'll sort of like sniff it and hold it. Um, and uh, he'll just sort of look at it quizzically. Uh, all the while, like he's like grunting, like. Um, uh, That's probably like some behavioral sciences of like ancient civilizations kind of thing. Like, like almost like, I guess like Tarzan would be the closest thing that I can think of, um, you know. Um, and he, he'll start uh, speaking uh, and talking, uh, but it's not something you would understand. Um, no. it, it probably sounds like very guttural sort of, uh, talking, uh, kind of almost like a little bit like Ethiopian sort of like, uh, style talking, um, you know, very sort of, uh, 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 primitive, uh, style of like communication and stuff. Charles is more world worldly than me. He's been more places. But... Well, I mean, I've heard this type of chatter before, but you know, Woodbury was there to, to translate mm. for me. So. Right. Um, I find hitting them with a stick usually gets rid of them. If you want. I mean, I'm just being really cooperative. I'm like, we don't know anything about these people. Well, he's not armed anymore. Yeah. We could, we could you know, knock him out, kill him, whatever. Fairly easily. He seems fairly <laughs> docile, though. He's like, it's a native civilization. This is I, like, I do believe he's actually part of the British Empire now. <laughs> I haven't claimed him yet. We'll see. Stick a flag into his back and then he turns around <laughs> and kills both of us. 
shit. How long have they been gone at this point? Probably a good 10 minutes or so. I All know. right. Yeah. I just uh, look over to Jer- Jerius and say, like... It's a big shit. Let- <laughs> yeah, I just say, we let the two of them go alone. And I shout out, is everything all right? If everything's fine, just make more really loud noises, I guess. <laughs> like, you know, because I don't know that anything's wrong, but I'm growing bored and it's, they've been gone for a while. Mm-hmm. Do, do we hear that? Uh, yeah, but it's interrupted uh, because um, uh, you hear uh, something clattering on the ground. Okay. Like we do? Yep. Outsiders do. Like? The people who are outside hear it. Okay. Hear what? What clattering? Is it like wood, glass, stone, feet, claws? Stone. Stone. Stone stone hitting stone. Stone hitting stone. Oh, no. Is this perception check material or are we meant to, (laughs) like, uh, use player knowledge? Yes, you can perceive if you'd like. Always. <laughs> yeah, uh, this would be eight difficulty. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you guys, uh, you know, start to hear it. it uh, a few more clatters and stuff like that and uh, with the perceptions rolling as high as you have been um, yeah uh, they are definitely arrows they are missing their targets um, so we can hear them but we can't see them oh they're, they're like maybe a good uh, like 30 meters behind you sort of thing. Okay, so it's one of those things that we heard them and then turned around. It's like, oh. Yeah, someone's shooting arrows at us. Weird. Now, can I get a style point for being a danger magnet for endangering the entire party? <laughs> Man, you're thirsty for them. Uh, no. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Shit. Uh, well, I guess take cover um, inside the ship if the arrows seem to be coming from well outside it? Yeah, they're like, um, from uh, from what you can tell, they're coming from uh, the the direction that you came from, basically. Can Jonathan just blow a hole inside the ship we can climb in? I mean, it's, an, it's, a, it's sort of like net rigging. You could very easily, if you wanted to, um, to Jarius, get up there. Um, I mean, if nothing else, you can just grab something and we'll pull you up. Hmm. Right. Yeah, so it, it wouldn't, it's not like it would be, if anything, um, if, if, for example, this was difficult for you to get inside, that is how you would get a style point for your arm, right? Um, meaning that you would uh, be in danger for it, but you're not necessarily, I mean. I was, I was trying to play into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's you have enough time very easily to get in. Um, as you start climbing up the rigging, and I assume that Dejerius, you're probably the first one up there, right, with the help of others, or one of the first of your party. Um, you do start to see um, people coming out of the uh, out of the savannah, basically, um, and these are very uh, these are very tribalistic people. Um, we're talking like a uh, red face paint um and uh they've got like uh basically skulls on sticks uh that are in their like you know how someone t- sometimes people would carry like flags and they'd stick it in like a flag carry on their belt or whatever um they've got sticks coming out of like a belt in uh on their back with skulls on top of the sticks sort of thing and uh, a lot of them have it and there's a there's a there's a good twenty people coming out of the, uh, the savannah now. Um, if I'm first, if I'm first up, um, I uh, could, okay. Um, could I? I have a I have a very high score in chemistry that I don't get to use very often. <laughs> uh, I like where this is going. Okay, yeah. I want to try, can I try to use my knowledge of chemistry to make, with all the various bric-a-brac that I've collected 
in the hollow earth. I want to try to make a firework. Hmm. I mean, you would have, I, I assume, okay. I'm going to say yes, because of the fact that Doc is with you and Doc uses, so not Doc, um, Jonathan is with you. And Jonathan's the type of man who uses old flintlock weaponry. So he would just have like gunpowder, like reserves, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it wouldn't be too hard to do it. I'd, like if you're going specifically for uh, like entertainment fireworks, like I'm going, for, I'm going for a big flash that looks so sort dangerous. of like a chemical flare almost, right? Uh, sure. Like, do you want it to shoot up in the air or? Two attempts to sk- spook them off. Okay. I would like to uh, use my craft chemistry to give him an extra die on that, like we did last time. Sure. Uh, with uh, some other skill. Yep. Uh, so you have to make the check first in order to give him. Okay. Up there, uh, and I, yeah, I got a plan. I need some gunpowder. Um, what uh, what difficulty is it to assist? Just five. Uh, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a five to assist uh, with it. Okay, I will try. To make this would probably be a nine though. Uh, to make something like if it's just like a, a thing that shoots in the air and explodes and it's very loud and potentially bright, uh, yeah, you can make it, uh, but it's going to be difficult to do it, especially with what you have. Um, so I read, I read what he's doing and say, "Brilliant, yes, yes," and I start like scrambling and just trying to be, you know, uh, extra literal pair of hands. I <laughs> actually happen to have a couple of flares on me that you can use. Oh, is that? Can you help me too? Uh, yeah, sure. I can. You can like, okay. deconstruct the flare in order to use the that. So I'd give you an extra dice on that, just for, um, you know, having supplies for the for the check. Yeah, absolutely. So what should, what should I roll? Uh, so this will be. Uh, you said you have alchemy, right? I have chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah. So go ahead and is this craft chemistry or is this just chemistry straight up? Oh, uh, this is science chemistry. Science chemistry. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you can, you can, um, let's just say that this is a, a two-step check, right? Um, so what we'll do is instead of it being a, a five, uh, for Gideon, um, we'll get you to reroll that Gideon. Um, and you'll, you will make the, you, you will make <laughs> the, the thing that's required for it. And Solomon will give you the actual chemistry part of it, if that makes any sense. Right. Um, cause you have the crafting skill and he has the science skill so um that's how we'll do it um uh so both of you can have a a a one bonus die uh because of the supplies that uh jonathan is giving you should i just roll another d10 then at this point or do i no no (laughs) roll roll craft chemistry uh but the difficulty will be eight unless you wanted to keep it because i mean it wasn't bad is that a speciality or is that it was not it wasn't difficulty eight uh the specialty speciality does not apply um so what no what we can do is we can just look at that because if we look at your role you got seven eight nine seven so you would have two successes there instead of four if you want to keep that two successes and you said the difficulty is going to be at eight because like all right yeah so (laughs) you need to pass an eight on a d10 and you rolled two out of four there so it's up to you whether Um, you want to re-roll that or not well see he he sort of indicated that his skill was super high um, so me doing this, it's a pretty big risk. Like I don't mind trying, but just note that like my chemistry was enough to assist another, not necessarily enough to have come up with this plan in the first place. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, so you're assisting him by doing like the tasks that he needs you to do. Like... He's mixing the chemical. You're packaging it. Yeah. Basically. Okay. And you're giving me a plus one dice pool modifier. That's right. Yes. All right. Here we go. Eight difficulty. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> one success yeah okay yeah so you you um hastily construct this uh um uh i guess flare l- sort of mortar um launching apparatus um more like you probably throw it in the air as high as you can and it explodes right it's almost like a fl- like a grenade to, to to some degree um uh let's get that uh science chemistry roll from you Graham, so difficulty eight with a plus one modifier. Uh, nice, 
Cool. So that's a speciality because oh no, that's a success. So we're counting the first one, not the bottom one there. Um, oh, no, it is. It's, oh yeah, it's, man. Because science is always a speciality, right? So yeah. I uh, covered four pins on that same one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's a pretty crazy roll. Um, but yeah, we'll take the uh, we'll take the three. So yeah, you you craft this uh, essentially what's like a uh, just like a it's like a bundle of like a, with a, with a um, with a fuse in it, right? Um, kind of almost it like probably looks like a really old school handmade hand grenade, like it's yeah. wax paper bundled up in a bowl with something sticking out the top. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, um, so uh, maybe some leaves. Yeah, so this would be in order to launch this thing, you could throw it. Um, you could also, um, if you have any sort of slings or anything like that, you could use that too. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you could wait for them. You could wait for a prime opportunity for them to get closer and then use it when it'll be more effective. Um, um, so, so could we put this? So not not strictly a flare, but a firework in the flare gun. And he so and then Jonathan shoots it far far. Uh, they're not that kind of. They're flares. the chemical they're like, flares. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. Sig signal flares for like dropping down holes and things. Well, I imagine that even even still, I imagine Jonathan could throw farther than I can. Yeah. So so I I imagine, you know, I do I do the theory crafting and Gideon puts it together and then hands it to Jonathan to throw. Yeah, the pulp version is that we're literally like tossing the thing to one another and he's he's poised <laughs> at the edge of the the, the uh yeah. rail so how long do you wait for because right now like if they're, sh they're they're sort of running towards the ship right um uh kind of like the the scene from the is it the i forget which indiana jones it is the one with the boulder when he's running out of that temple with the temple of doom is it temple of doom where he's running out of the 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 temple with the you know, idle and they're shooting arrows at him. Uh, it, it's sort of, it's sort of very similar to that scene. Uh, they're running uh, down to the ship that you guys are in, and uh, arrows are basically hitting the side of the ship. Uh, some have landed on the deck behind you. Um, but how long do you wait? Well, how long did how long did that take? Uh, to build it, uh, you probably spent a, uh, like a minute or two on it. Well, how far away are they? Uh, let, let me just see the distance on a bow and I'll give you your answer after that. They're, they're running at the speed of stock footage. Yes. Just, uh, uh, so the range is 50 feet. So they're probably shooting. Like the reason why they're not hitting you is because they're going above that. So I'm probably going to say they're probably like 70 feet out maybe. Well, I, I leave that to Jonathan to determine. That is exactly what Jonathan is attempting to determine. What is the throwing range on a... Just throwing? Yeah. I believe it's like your strength, but I could be... Um... I have a slingshot or something, or there's a can like a trebuchet on board. Like, you could you could make a sling out of some canvas pretty easily. It's not, like, that's not a difficult thing to construct. Uh, you could even use a belt to throw this thing, and it would throw further. Uh, a sling uh, can throw up to 50 feet. So, um, what is a throwing? That, that's the problem with this game. It's like, uh, how do I throw? It should be easy, but it's, it's not like, um, let's take a look here at the maneuvers. Throw. A character attempts to throw another character to the ground. Nope. That's not it. <laughs> I mean, like it says, hand grenade range ten feet. That's not. That's not the range of a grenade. That's the range of the explosion. Yeah, that's the range of the. Yeah, exactly right. So. Um... Uh, it says. I mean, it gives it modifiers for weapon range. Weapon range times two. Weapon range times four. Mm -hmm. um, under on one twenty three. One twenty three. Yeah, under range. I think, I think it, we have to multiply um, the grenade range by each of those, and then he he works backward from that modifier. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you'd use athletics. Um, 
Your character's base attack rating is equal to his appropriate in in skill. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I see. Yeah, the range. Yeah, the range. Um, so you don't need like you're not trying to hit anything with this, right? We're just trying to determine your your range for throwing. So, athletics is a. Um, as a strength skill, I believe. Um, let me just double check that. Athletics is uh, strength. Yes. So uh, let's. Oh, uh, there's actually a specialized skill for throwing. That's interesting. I did not know that. Uh, okay. So what is your uh, what is your strength skill? Do you have athletics? Um... No, I have a strength of three. But no athletics? No. Okay. Uh, so three, you'll be rolling six dice. Um, so I want to say that you could you could probably throw the distance that you could throw a spear, which is 25 feet. Pretty easily. Maybe up to 30. 30 feet sounds about right. So that's going to be well within the range of the bows, isn't it? Yes. Bows are probably just over double that size, that distance. Yeah. Like, to give you an idea, you're about as effective throwing as your blunderbuss is um, in terms of range. Or well, we could all crouch down kind of um, behind the rails and wait for him to take, pop up when they're closer, right? Mm -hmm. Take cover and wait for him to get closer, yeah. 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 Yes. It's a so um let's let's duck down underneath um you two you two down here with you uh with this strange man uh you start to hear the peppering of uh something hitting the the hull of the ship like in large frequency actually um um and I think it's raining yeah it it sounds it, it does sound like like rain hitting tin roof right essentially uh a little bit um uh and the the man um, perks his head up and he uh, he runs for the door and runs up the uh, uh, up to the stairs if you let him. Yeah, as long as he doesn't go too close to me or anything. That's fine. Yeah, I'll run after him. Yeah. Um, so, so he'll climb up onto the the main deck of the ship, um, and uh, he'll run to the railing. And he, he will start shouting at the, uh, the, the, the people shooting the arrows uh, very angrily. Um, you, you're not versed in his language, but uh, you do understand when someone is uh, yelling <laughs> obscenities or, or something along those lines at them. Cursing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to just hang down and in, in, I want to check the bodies. Sure. Uh, everyone else who's on top of the ship a strange man has just run up to the ship. Um, he's covered in black or brown or gray body tattoos uh, from head to toe. Um, and I'm he's... running up behind him being like, actually, I don't know if they're up there. Never mind. Yeah, and he's uh, he's shaking his fist um, at the uh, people shooting arrows at him, at you guys. All right, he's on our show. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. If, if he doesn't like run directly to us then it's probably safest for him because if he had have like come up and run straight at us, he probably would have been shot. Yeah. Um, he'll pull out his bow and start returning fire. He has uh, oh, a total well, of uh, five arrows. <laughs> I like him already. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so what's the plan, Joyce, guys? You have oh, we're I am waiting for them. Helping Jessica haul the doctor who is bound hand and feet up over the rail. Yeah. Um, because I my guess is the rest of these guys will let him die. So the uh, currently he's still useful, I think. And so I I figure we're finishing that on uh, uh now because the flare was the most important thing and he was probably still down there just going, Oh shit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, when I see it's... everyone else, I'm like, don't shoot. Well, all right. And then 
Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so he'll, he'll grab you by the shoulder as you walk past him, uh, Francis, and he will say something along the lines of, And he'll like point to the, the people out in the, uh, the field that are shooting arrows. And... Sorry, one more time. Uh, and he'll, he'll, he'll point to, he'll point, like he'll push into your head with his finger, like a, like pretty hard. And then, and then he'll, and then he'll like do like, uh, like that sort of thing at you. Um, like at that point, I'm like, Oh, cannibals. I, I, I say <laughs> that out loud and he's just like, what? Oh, got the, oh, got the. We don't speak each other's language. But then I'm like, cannibals, cannibals. And then I just start yelling cannibals and like, yeah, like oh, they're cannibals. Wait, cannibals? Cannibals? I'm doing the Shia LaBeouf. Like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Arrows are now like landing quite regularly on the actual hull of the deck. Um, and they've probably uh, come up to 50 feet at this point. Uh, so I, if we if we go back down underneath, uh, Charles, you're investigating the bodies. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, flip out a, a pocket knife and basically like pry open the jaws, shake the teeth. Uh, the teeth are actually like surprisingly white, um, hmm. and they are surprisingly well uh, taken care of. No, like gold teeth or anything like that. No, nothing like that. Um, and then I'll, I'll basically uh, go, go over them, see how they died, uh, check them for anything, you know, kind of. Uh, well, uh, uh, primitive weapons uh, striking their lower abdomen. Okay, so bows, stone swords, you know, axes, whatever. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing like remarkable like this. If if I if I was um, anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, somewhere less fantastical would they would they look just kind of mostly like regular savages i'm used to no these are surprisingly um like the the savages that you oh the aboriginals that you used to running into um mm -hmm. uh you know they're definitely you've never met any caucasian aboriginals if that makes any sense and that yeah, okay. to you is like the strangest part about all of this so all right. Well, I'm assuming I can hear the sounds of fighting up above me. And you hear the the distant roar of people shooting. Okay. And engaging. I in uh, I kind of like creak a little bit slowly to my to my you know stand up and uh, put my pocket knife away, and I'll go up up to the top of the deck, uh, whistling "God Save the Queen." Mm -hmm. Slowly, like a, a jaunt, just for the record. <laughs> Right. I'm assuming, like we 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 searched the whole of the bottom, didn't we? Oh uh, yeah, else? there's like uh, boxes and stuff like that down here too, and you know, okay. like they, they haven't been opened, and they do have, uh, you know, uh, a merchant stamp on them and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, save it for later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So everyone's so, on top of the board now. So what's the yeah? It sounds like pretty close to in range of the of the uh, makeshift grenade, right? Yeah, they're about 20 feet out, and they're within full distance of their bows, and they're, they're kind of sitting here. Um, you do notice that uh, some of them are, uh, you know, gathering uh, like spears and stuff, and they're uh, looking like they're going to come in. Is there one that stands out, like one with more skulls on his sticks, or one that's wearing a fancy necklace uh yeah uh he stands out because he's fucking enormous um right that's the one i want to aim at with the with your grenade uh no with my rifle because they're staying out of range of the grenade aren't they yeah they're, they're staying at bow distance at this point um yeah what's the distance on your rifle 100 really yeah oh fucking hell yeah go ahead and uh take a shot at them <laughs> I love that. It's just like, oh yeah, no, nah, his uh, his ex big gun is like twenty five feet, but it makes sense that you you have a rifle. Yeah, what's um? So the difficulty is five, obviously. Uh, okay. 
Okay. 13. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. I forgot about I, I should have. I should have actually taken the time to spend my two turns aiming and see if I could get that even higher. <laughs> mm. I think you'd only get two extra dice from that, man. Though your difficulty four. does go down to four because of, like, your stupid ability, but... Yeah. Uh, what was but that, I uh... rolled 13... I rolled 13 dice and got 13 successes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's... I was looking at the ranged weapon. I was like, what? I can't see any guns on here. I don't know where they are. There uh, goes the slow-mo budget for this episode. Yeah, 100. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay, uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, roll this guy's... Um, this guy who now actually has twice the defense he had earlier. No, actually... Um, he's important. He has a metal skull. I'm just... I, I, I do have to make a leader for this, this one. So just give me a second here. It won't change too much. It'll just... Like, leaders basically just get, like, um, a few extra uh, stats um, when it comes to it. But mostly just, like, to make up for the fact that he's, like, enormous. Um, so, yeah, okay. And his charisma would also go up, too. All right, um... Alrighty, um, so defense. <laughs> He's rolling a measly uh, five, uh, four dice here. So mm, yes, uh, ten, ten damage. Yeah, uh, you. Um, where were you aiming? Like I know you didn't aim, but where were you like hoping to hit him? You muted yourself. You're, you're muted. Yes. Uh, at 50 yards out, probably aiming center mass, so upper chest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so there's a lot of noise going on. Like the like they're basically uh, shouting and doing like war cries and that sort of stuff and getting troops together and stuff like that. Um, so you shoot this man right in the stomach, um, and he just sort of like clasps like his stomach and sits like at this distance and just sort of falls over flat onto the ground um but it doesn't like he, he was like at the back of the crowd sort of thing just sort of like yelling um words that you can't understand um and he just sort of just falls over and everyone keeps firing bows and stuff at you so um no wasn't that one i say as i reload the rifle <laughs> Get another uh, shot, old boy. It probably was that one, but, uh, you know, we'll see how well they notice. So, um, And uh, as you guys have very coherently uh, and correctly uh, assumed these uh, cannibals, and just because their lead is gone doesn't mean shit for a lot of cannibals. So, um, yeah, some of these men are now running uh, towards you uh, with spears. Um, I'd say maybe about uh, 10 of them. Uh, uh, as soon, I would like to, when they're in range, take a shot with my Webley. Yeah, same. I mean, I, I, I thought we were distracting. You don't have a Webley, sir. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, the SMG has been trained on them, so I haven't had a chance to aim. <laughs> but I do have an SMG. Yeah, like, yeah. this is what it's for. This is how the Nazis used it on us. I, but uh, are we an initiative or... Like, nah, uh... it's, just, it's just sort of loose flowing at the moment. We're okay, gonna... all right. We're not going to really go into too much... Um, uh, Webley, Webley, uh, uh, range is 50 foot, 50 foot. All right. Yeah. You can for a pistol. Really? That's the, yeah. okay. Yeah, sure. Webley, yeah. You can, you can take a shot. Yep. All right. Uh, I don't think that's the maximum range. I think that's the effective aiming range. Mm. Yeah. No, that's the, that's the it's, max. Uh, most, web, most role web. playing games that I played with guns. It's always like, yeah, 50 feet. That's about the. The to kill distance of a pistol, so um, yeah, yuck. All right, oh, uh, I need to. Oops, sorry, that was not. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Then I still only got one success. Uh, that was uh, easier difficulty than it should have been. So, yeah, um, you know, you shoot one of them, and uh, 
another guy like basically starts like licking uh his wound that you shot him in um uh like like drops his spear or drops his bow i guess and it's like you know grabs him and starts like fucking like licking and like sucking on his wound essentially how utterly obscene Oh, good. They're hungry. What orientation is the the part of the ship that we're in? Is it like face forward at the people, or is it like slightly ajar? Uh, there. Are, so, if you guys came from a direction, you came along uh, the side of the ship, and uh, that side of the ship is now the direction that these people are firing into. The ship would have cannons, correct? <laughs> there we go. That's the person I want. That's the answer I wanted to hear. Yes, they do have cannons. They Fuck have yeah. Port holes and stuff. So, I I have the gunnery skill, so I'm gonna <laughs> run down. And uh, if it if it makes sense that like I know that this one cannon shot is not gonna send the ship flying off the cliff. No, no. Uh, you would have to shoot it. Um, in the forward there's a reason map. the cannons are on wheels mm-hmm. yeah um so yeah you can uh you can definitely take a shot at these guys. Yeah, i'm going i'm going to see if these cannons are in operation or if they're too fucked up uh they would be but um part of the gunnery skill is that you can make a skill check to clean and sort of maintain one of these guns at least get it to firing if you take your turn to do it i will definitely allow that to happen there, there could also be like a swivel gun like they used to have swivel guns up on the prow, and as I, I said, like, everything oh, everything up top has been completely oh, uh, okay. mo- like cleaned off. Like there's nothing up there at all. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just like, I'll take my turn to do that, or if I can spend style points to get it ready faster. Uh, so I got four. Let me, let I got just, four style points to blow on it. So yeah, let me just make sh- uh, for plot opportunities. Yeah, I'll give you for two. Um, you can, you know. Uh, Find the one that was, you know, uh, sort of preloaded, and all you have to do is just dump out the old gunpowder and put some new stuff in that you got from, because uh, all of that stuff would be would have been waterlogged and gross and not usable. But if you grab some um, gunpowder from Jonathan, you can definitely fire the cannon. I don't know if I'm willing to part with literally all of my ammo. It, no, takes like, a lot of gu- it takes a lot of gunpowder to fire a cannon. Yeah, but um, it's not like uh, it's it's not like you need a lot. Basically, this is no. hollow earth, like, so all you need to do starter. is like mix it with the current stuff that's there in order to like have it burn properly. Yeah, uh, it's just a starter. It's kind of like uh, kindling a little bit. So, and you have as much as you need uh, to make. Like he spent the plot opportunities to do it. I'm just sort of hand waving how he managed to make it happen, right? So that's what style points are used for. You're okay. not you're not losing ammo by him okay, doing it. It's just like you just happen to a have lot of gun powder. Yeah, you just happen to have enough to make one shot possible with a with a old defunct. Gun. Yeah, I had I had like a, a spare, like one of those the horns filled with gun powder that they use. Just yeah. one of those that was a spare one. Yeah, just lying around, you know, as you do. Yeah. Um so while you're cleaning that, I guess uh, uh, Solomon, you've got a turn. You want to do something, and as well as uh, get in before, you know. Um, oh no, get in! You wanted to shoot the SMG, right? Full auto fire. Yeah. Um, it's plus three against one target, but minus two for each each target between five. Like I think if there's if there's literally twenty of these guys, I would probably be spraying it across them. <laughs> there's what? a strafe maneuver, isn't there? That does. I just say that. like cannibals are not men but demons. Show no mercy and just. <laughs> like... Yeah. So uh, there is um, uh, there is yeah. With full auto, you can do like a, a special attack with it. Um, yeah, it's on one eighteen. Yeah, you uh, attack multiple think... targets with a full auto fire for every five foot distance between targets. You suffer a negative two penalty to the attack. Um, so you can hit all twenty of them. Um, no problems. Uh, the 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 problem is when it comes down to like this is where it comes down to like how many times you want to roll some dice. So we're just gonna uh, you know this is more like a, a a big sort of like narrative scene. I'm not gonna make you roll yeah. twenty dice yeah. for twenty people. So what we're going to do is um, 
uh, we're going to give you, uh, you're going to fire 20 bullets uh, for auto. Um, and uh, the you roll um, and we'll just say there's a negative five in there um, because of just the distance you're trying to cover. Um, so you okay. get, so basically it's a negative two that you get. Um, All right. I'll burn a style point because, it, you know, uh, so you want me to, um, that means uh, negative two to the pool. Negative two to or, the pool, yep. Um, and then uh, difficulty is five? Difficulty is five, yep. Um, and if you want to burn style points, uh, it's one point for one dice. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna adjust that negative to down to negative one by burning my last style point. Got it. Here we go. Whoa, oh my God. That's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it is. yeah, that is unfortunate, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just, we're just going to roll a group defense here because it's easier. I told you guys before <laughs> firearms, I'm good with rifles, but not as good as the, the professionals. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, basically like your bullets sort of just like you, you lean over the, the, the railing and you just unleash an entire clip, um, of this ammunition it 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 looks cool like it looks like you're pushing them back but the moment you run out of ammunition is the moment they they sort of regather their courage because there's a lot more of them and they than realize you. hang on a minute that actually didn't hurt yeah yes. that did nothing to us your magic means nothing to us um no oh, i should have used magic clearly unfortunately it only works within 10 feet yeah. <laughs> so this is what i had <laughs> so can i get a um i'm just going to get a blanket defense uh i guess uh i guess uh solomon if you want to do something as well you have an opportunity to do something not really anything i can do i uh could grab the grenade from hide right he still hasn't used it but yeah they were still it. out of range so you Feel free to throw it. I what mean, is it? What is your strength? Probably going to be as effective as I am. Actually, you'd probably be even more effective. You've got one arm, so that's going to be like twice as strong as mine. Because you do everything <laughs> with that one arm. Yeah. What is what is your strength? Two. Two. Okay, so you could probably throw it maybe 20, 25 feet if you're trying. Um, it's about the distance of a spear, basically. So. The point. The point of the firework idea was to make them go away, but I think that ship has sailed. Um, so to speak. Yeah. Um, the... So I guess... can I go down and 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 help Francis spot? Oh yeah, no, you can definitely. Um, I'll tell you what. So uh, if you want to spend your turn helping him, like arrange the cannon. Um, I say like thirty degrees and north. Yep. And so you, out. what we'll say is that you spend your turn to give him an aiming bonus. Uh, so he'll get a plus two on his. Uh, cannon shot um yeah so you go down and you help him arrange uh the cannon um and uh yeah uh so let's get a blanket defense roll from everyone who's on top of the ship right now um I went below, right? yes you went below yeah so uh that would be charles jonathan and gideon as well as jessica um So make sure you roll that at five difficulty. Yep. 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 Okay. And uh, I will... Do I have Jessica's open? I think I do. Ah, oh, there she is. Cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, wow. She has a lot of defense. <laughs> It's the highest defense roll we got within our party here. Eight. Jesus. Hide. Fuck. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get some... We'll just do one roll. Um, and this is, like, that's, just arrows. That's all dex, though, like, because I have a high dex. If I do mm -hmm. um, act, uh, passive defense only, it's kind of shitty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Bows are two, and they use 
sticks. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be Dex. Four. Okay, um, everyone's fine. Basically, um, I guess Gideon and uh, oh, we need to roll Jessica's defense. Oh no, she did. That was the one above that. Yep. So. Um, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, Gideon, like, uh, you have the most, like, maybe the arrows are sort of narrowly hitting. Uh, oh, we'll, we'll roll this guy's as well. Why not? So if you tie, it's no damage, right? Yeah, it's no damage, but you basically just get, like, superficial wounds. Or, like, okay. you know, it goes through your clothing, or, like, it uh, lands in, like, a book you have in your uh, covering your heart, or whatever the fuck you want, you know? Like, something cool happens to you, but... Uh, it's not a just a, an actual miss. It's just like yeah, yeah. I'll I'll put it with my other superficial wounds from the raptors. I yeah. still have like three huge ass. Uh, claws you are you wearing are you wearing a hat? Yeah, I imagine like it just threw the hat. And, oh. <laughs> you know, like um, yeah. Uh, okay. So um, now everyone can sort of have a turn now. Uh, the the spearmen have uh, uh, are basically like clawing their way up into the top now so like hands are coming over the railings at this point um and they're making their way up are they within 10 feet uh yeah they're basically like hanging on to they're about to board they're about like uh if you like there's about 10 of them and they're climbing up onto the ship now and they're they're literally they're, about they're to climb within on firework range yes but they're they're also uh within stabbing range Yay! Like, you can go up and, like, kick them off the edge of the boat sort of thing. Right, if you wanted to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm holding this improvised explosive device. I may as well put it to use. Yeah. Um, all right, so who wants to do their turn first? I, I think I'll... Wait. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait, exactly. Because I'll, I'll hypnotize them if the explosive doesn't scare enough of them off. Uh, does, are they all... On the ship now, or is there like some still out that I can, that the ship cannon can fire at? There's bowmen. There's twenty bowmen, and then there's ten climbing under the ship now. All right, I guess now is as good a time as any to fire a cannon at bowmen. Go for it. Ancient uh, docked ship warfare. Yep. I get a plus two. You get a plus two. Bowmen. Yep. Uh, for the aim. Yep. Difficulty? Five. Okay. Six. Ooh. I like it. Uh, so what is the... Um... I looked it up during that. It's uh, cannon armament. Armament. Cannon eight per side. That's just like ship utils. Six mm. L. Range 100 feet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, so you should roll an extra six dice then. For me, please. So 60, uh, 10. Okay. Greater than five. And greater than five with a space in between it? No, the other just stuff? one stuff. Yeah. 60, 10, greater than five. Yeah. Oh, like 60, 10 space greater than five? No. So just okay. one or one thing. Just making sure. Okay. So you got a total of 10 damage there. Not bad. Um, do you know what the explosive range of that is? I imagine it's more like how many people get hit by it, right? So that, um, that's the thing. Like, I, I'm trying to imagine you shoot a cannon. It's more like a... It's a line focused, of, like it's yeah, a ball. Right. But it's also like if you like it hits the ground and shrapnel goes off sort of thing. Um, all right. Let's just say that... Um, is there like a bomb? Or Let's a say that you hit like maybe something? like five of them, right? Like they're all sort of lined up or clumped together. Sure. Um, firing their bows. Um, so uh, I'm going to just roll one defense for five. Let's just, let's just do it. 
No difficulty five. Yeah, hmm. I think they're dead. Um Cool. So yeah, you just fucking massacre a line of these bowmen as this goes boom and the, the the cannon rolls back and sort of like it's on like chains connected to the wall sort of thing, so it doesn't like fly off the other side of the ship when you shoot mm. it. Um and those strain as it like pulls back. Um I also like to think that maybe there's a guy climbing up the side of the ship. And when you fired it, and it like took one of his legs off, sort of thing, as it flew by. Um, but yeah, you you managed to uh, basically uh, quarter the number of bowmen that are out there. Cool. Well, I'm uh, gonna go to the next cannon because I'm assuming there's many cannons. Yep. So yeah. I'm gonna go to the next cannon and get that ready to fire. Okay. So you spend your turn doing that, and yep. if uh, if uh, Solomon helps you. Um, you will just be able to fire that next turn. Cool. I'll do that again. Yeah. Sweet. Um, all right. What is everyone else doing? These these gentlemen are still uh, hungry and looking to feed. Well, I'm going to throw that grenade over there. It's more like a... I imagine it's more like a flashbang at this point than... Uh... Yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a firework, but... Yeah. So... Look. All I'm going to say is, as far as Hyde knows, is that they built a bomb. He's not a chemistry guy. It's it's pretty clear what it is. It's gunpowder in a bundle with a fuse. So mm-hmm. this is a bomb. He's going to throw it at them with intent to kill. Okay. Um. So let's see here. Uh-huh. With this... Uh... Explosives. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So it's a fifty-foot radius light, uh, very bright. Um, okay. Okay. It's touch attack. That's what we're rolling here for this. Mm. Okay, so they don't get passive defense. They only get active defense when you throw it. Um, Because it's like a radius explosion, right? So um, go ahead and give me your strength with uh, an extra two dice on it. Uh, So you want a five? Yes. I'll just roll dex because that's actually five. Okay. All right, four successes. Uh, wow. No, no, no. Oh, uh, no, it's five total. Oh, wait, no, what is your strength? Three, right? Yeah, uh, no, my strength is three, so I rolled... You rolled seven dice, then. Why did it roll seven? Doesn't matter, we can still roll with four. It's not a big deal. Um, it's under five, as far as I'm concerned. Because um, you went five plus two, so... No, it's uh your strength is um uh you, so when you roll an attribute, it times it by two. Oh, that's right. It doubles it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So yeah. So you get uh, so I should have rolled strength six. with a plus two mod. Yeah, so it's it's six, seven, eight is what your total would be rather than ten. Right, hang on, so. Plus two, difficulty five, like that, is that? Yep, that's it. That's how you do it. So five successes, better than what you got previously. That's good. Um, All right, Uh, so he will roll uh, defense minus two because he doesn't get his active defense. Oh, sorry, that's wrong. I did that wrong. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I don't have the uh, modifier prompt on. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, So you throw this grenade, this flare bomb, essentially. Um, It lands on uh, or around the dudes that are climbing up. Um, 
and uh, a couple of them like it's so brightly illuminated like even some of you guys um anyone who's shooting at the bowman now you're gonna like you're gonna get a negative two modifier to it including the cannon people because of how bright it is and how hard it is to aim um because it's almost like it's a chemical light right so it's it's very bright and it's very distracting um but essentially what happens is three of the dudes that were climbing up uh they're gonna fall off uh and one of them uh it actually like hit him and landed at his feet when it went off and he's got like these burns up his feet now basically up his legs um from where the uh chemical fire like uh where the uh you know explosion happened essentially um but what it does mean is that uh, the bowmen will also have a very hard time to hit you guys as well. Um, so there's that. Whatever cannon you fire, fire and forget. Yeah, yeah. Wait, you have a rough idea where they are. I mean, yeah. It just means I'm rolling like my base gunnery without the modifier from, from the, Solomon. And it, well, no, Solomon helped you ready it quicker. You don't get the extra aim. Oh, thing. he's not doing the aim stuff. Okay. Otherwise, you'd spend a whole nother turn preparing it, right? So, I, I think the fact that nobody died from the bomb mm -hmm. leaves Hyde feeling somewhat disappointed. <laughs> he looks a little sad. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's not a grenade. Yeah. Yeah. Could have threw it. He was like, "Yeah, wait, what?" That guy died <laughs> so much he vaporized. Can't even see him anymore. He's dead. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. So. uh Let's uh, let's get another round of what you guys are doing up top. So we've got. Uh... I will try to stop them in their tracks. Sure. I uh, show them the evil eye on my one blue glove and uh, sort of reflect the light from my sunglasses across them all, and uh, I just say, "Kneel to you. We are as gods." And I don't care that they don't know <laughs> my language. I'm just uh, trying to get them all to look at me. Okay. Um... So uh, it only works. To, it only works against the close range guys. Yeah. Um, the the far away guys are are too far. Yeah, I get that. Um, so uh, these guys, uh, you know, as you uh, as you're preparing this, they cl they climb up under the, uh, you know, the ship and they're sort of level with you and they're you know they got their spears pointed at you and stuff like that. You you go into your little, uh, you know, pose that you do. Um, the light reflects the, the the chemical light reflects off your glasses, and all we see is just like white squares where your eyes used to be. Um, and go ahead and make uh, this check. Uh, the difficult okay. the willpower is three for the cannibals. Okay, um, I have no dice to modify this with, and I assume it's just against five because it's against their defense, right? Yes, it's just straight five. Yeah. All right. Damn. Boom. boom. Uh, that is really good. Um, so I think for every success over three, it's an extra turn, yeah? Yes, but I'm not yet specialized in this thing, so it, it's the regular yep. seven, not, not the additional. No, yeah, I understand. Uh, so this is an extra... But they lose their... I guess you said there those was three, right? Yes, it's three. So they get four turns of, of loss, essentially. Um, which is And their, their, their defense is gone, because it's doubled. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Uh, so that means that they lose their passive defense. Oh no, their active defense, right? Or is I it... just I like toss the the gun contemptuously down. I'm like, what the fuck was I doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have what you're good at. <laughs> yes. Keep doing that. Uh, all right then. So these men have been halted in their tracks. These uh, seven men, uh, the three that fell off, are still down there, and they're still able to climb up. Um. But uh, uh, I guess uh, the only people that haven't acted yet are Francis and um, uh, uh, Charles. So I'm going to punch one. Okay, go ahead. I believe punch is uh, just your strength. So, uh, Oh, do you have, melee, do you have brawl? Yeah. yeah, go ahead and roll your brawl. Okay. okay. Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this man snaps to attention and he opens his uh, mouth at you. Uh, he has, like all these men that climbed up, they have these, uh, basically the 
like they've used their hands to to put um like markings on their faces um mm. uh and uh it's you know chalk mixed with dried blood and uh stuff like that it's like red and their mouths are filled with like their teeth are disgusting um and they're basically just like grimy and almost black and their their mouth and fingernails are all disgusting and they smell really bad um and you go up and you punch one of these men and he just sort of snarls at you um uh and his eyes fixate on your you know panded skin and he's probably thinking about the type of things that he's going to uh eat off of your body um francis shooting the cannon oh yeah shooting the cannon. dice modifier minus two minus two yeah because of the flare yeah yep difficulty five three this time did you add the six dice for the lethality oh no so you'd be rolling uh next time you'd be rolling plus four okay so should i just roll four just roll six dice yeah. Greater than five. Oh shoot. Hold on. I was trying to do the the re roll trick, but five. So that's a total of uh eight. Um yeah, you, you take out another line of bowmen. Um uh you know they they've they've seen the folly of their ways at this point um and they're just going to drop their their bows and uh, pull out their spears and come running at the uh, ship as well um no point standing all the way back there if they're all going to die um but uh you know their reinforcement numbers are very small compared to what it was so they're down to just the 10 or so that are left do I think I'd have time to ready another shot while they're running at us? Uh, fuck yeah, you would. Why not? Sick. Third time's a charm. Let's do it one more time. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, so Jessica and um, the, uh, the man who is enemy of your enemy will um, attempt to fight. Um so uh let's go and he's uh, this uh the tattooed man is just going to attack the closest one to him i say look jessica row upon row of helpless men your favorite targets and i sort of glance over to francis <laughs> i mean helpless oh right because it's because they're yeah because they're very yes. sleepy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, thought you, I thought you meant the ones running at us. I was like. So he's going to drive the spear as hard as he can into the spine of this man. And he's going to push him down onto the ground. And, and he's going to pull the spear out and um, just sort of like it, sc while screaming at him in, in the, like a blood rage almost. Um, and Jessica is going to uh, do what she does best. Shoot a man. Um, where did Jessica get a gun? Did you take it off of her? From I you. Took her gun off of her. Oh, you took it back. You gave I it took, back. Yeah. Or... She she pointed it at me, so I took it off her. Yes, you did. No, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. You gave it and then had to take it back. Yes. Uh, well, she's not going to do anything then. She's going to. Um, uh, yeah, because she would have got fucking shot if she did magically produced a gun from somewhere. She's actually going to walk up to one of the guys who are, um, you know mind controlled and take it and just rip a spear from him and just jam it uh into their stomachs i guess um so okay all right yeah cool um so that would just be let me just write this down this is easier that way damage is three and Oh, she does have melee. Well, fuck. Uh, 
No bad. Um, eh. Oh yeah. Uh, she, she just fucking like, uh, pushes it through the, like he, she rips the spear out of one of the guy's hands and just like straight up through the bottom of the mouth. Uh, and the guy drops dead and she just pulls it out. He goes, um, and she turns her attention to, um, uh, one of the other spearmen up here. Um, so yeah, next turn rolls around. Um, the three dudes on the bottom of the uh, ship start climbing up and joining their friends. Um, the, I guess now six, uh, no, five dudes, uh, who have been charmed by Gideon, um, uh, look listlessly up into the sky, blinking occasionally. Uh, you muted. Chief. Oh, sorry, Charles didn't get a turn. Charles. No, no, I was going to say, my one's awake because I punched him, right? Yes, he is, yes. Sweet. So, uh, four dudes are now listlessly blinking around. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, he's going to uh, spear you. Uh, good man, Charles. Bring it. Uh, four successes. Roll some defenses for me, please. Yeah. Uh, so he he nar your the spear narrowly uh, skirts by your uh, your stomach as he uh, attempts to spear you. Um, it be you jump backwards like a cool guy. Um, and uh, yeah, those those spear those uh, arrow throwers bowmen. They're making their way to the ship, but you can still get one shot off this round. One final shot to bring them down. Um, all right, new round. Should I just shoot? Go ahead. Okay. So this would be, it's still negative two. Um, so this would be plus four on your uh, check. Modifier, yep. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Six. Yeah, you're still chunking away. Uh, there's probably like uh, the three remaining bowmen um, come running at the uh, at the ship with hunger in their eyes uh, and start climbing up. So there is now uh, four alive people, uh, four. Um, mentally detained people <laughs> and three who are climbing up the ship i uh step out of the way of hyde who i know has a blunderbuss uh because we've got bowling he pins knows. right now so I, <laughs> I withdraw and reload uh, uh back away because i've got a couple of rounds before those guys wake up yep mm -hmm. so they're, they're on their third now so after this one there'll be two so um yeah um uh, all right well you back up and you reload your gun um what would you like to do doc jonathan uh so i'm probably gonna I, I was probably laying down like shooting through the rails initially and then i threw the grenade over and that was a complete failure mm -hmm. so Hyde's gonna stand up and he's gonna be mumbling and muttering to himself about fucking explosives don't work and automatic weapons are absolutely useless the only one here that's got the right idea is the boy downstairs with the cannon and then as he's saying this he's he's moving to let's say 20 feet away from the group of dudes that have just climbed over the rail okay and then he turns and shoots the blunderbuss because you want to hit as many as you can uh yeah so it'll at 20 feet uh i'll suffer a negative two to my attack roll, but we'll target the opponent and anyone standing next to him. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, that includes Jessica. So go ahead and make your attack. Oh, no. Not Jessica. Mm-hmm. So this is a speciality one, yeah? Uh, yes. All right. Eight successes. Um, and these guys don't get their active defense because they're still listless. All right. They rolled perfectly because they only have two dice. Um, so that takes it down to six. 
Jessica is going to roll her defense. Wow. Uh, so what is her? Oh. Yeah, she basically uh, should have been paying more attention to the fight going on around her. Maybe. Uh, but she is uh, on the ground uh, bleeding. Uh, the requisite every session. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Are we the baddies? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, basically you just fucking shoot. Um, the four guys that were listless and um, Jessica all uh, go down into a bloody mess. Um, Jessica's still like moaning in pain, basically. Uh, she isn't outright dead um, since she is a. Uh, I was going to say, is this the case of she would be dead, but she's a, a plot NPC? No, no. no. So uh, she's, she's like us. She'll go into. Yeah, zero she'll go into. She'll can, have the yeah. negatives and stuff like that. Yeah. So she's at zero right now. Um, she has seven HP and she rolled one on her defense, which she had six dice of. So, you know, there's no saving that. Um, so, uh, you know, that's just how it goes. Um, uh, but yeah, good shooting text. There is now uh, three on the deck and three more coming up uh, with one fighting uh, Charles. Uh, is that me? Oh. You can have a turn, yes. Yeah. Um, so, to, uh, like, I imagine someone with medical would be needed to kind of stabilize her if she's bleeding out? Yep, pretty much. If you don't do Sweet. anything, she will die. That's pretty much I will works. repost at the filthy savage. Okay, go ahead, make a sword attack. Uh, yes. Are you actually, like, are you saying a maneuver here, or are you just, like... No, no, just, yeah, yeah, just... Okay, uh, mm-hmm. So, swords. I mean, because there is a parry you can do. Yeah, no, no. I'll, I'll go with... Um, actually, I believe... No, it's fine. I'll, I'll look at that in a second. Uh, four. Damn it. All right. Um, this guy gets his full defense because he may... I woke him up. Yeah, you punched him. Uh, yeah, so you, you stab this man in the shoulder... And he just like grabs your sword and he's just like, he just smiles at you. He's just, and uh, you pull the sword out and you cut his hand. Then he just licks his hand. He's just like, yeah, yeah, let's go. You cut off my finger. I'll probably eat it. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, who hasn't had a turn yet? Uh, Solomon, you want to do something? Are they in the area where me and Francis are? No, they're on their top deck. How is the way to, what's the entrance like to get down here? Is it like a bit? It's like a staircase through a hatch, basically. All right, I'll go up there and like peek over. Yeah, you peek up there, it's carnage. There are corpses everywhere. You see Jessica just like slowly crawling, um, leaving a trail of blood behind her. Um, there's like away? smoke of gunpowder going everywhere. Uh, how far away? I don't know, like 10 feet. How much? From you, probably like 10 feet. My character is scowling at Hyde. And uh, do I see Dejarius poke up at all? Yeah, yeah. No, his head is there. Like for what it's worth, Graham. Like I'm, I'm calling out to Dejarius. Like, Dejarius, I am not done with her yet. You know, like where are you? Like I probably don't necessarily know that you're popping up, but like I know we need a doctor, and I'm concerned <laughs> that we just clipped her. Okay. Um, how many guys? How many enemies are there? There's three on the top deck, but uh, there's three coming up the side. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I, I run over there and I I try to bodily drag her down the steps to where we are. Easy. 
Done. You've dragged her down out of harm's way. Is that all I can do, or would you let me use my guardian ability to put back up and start calling shots? Yeah, you can do that. I'm, I'm perfectly capable of fine for that to happen. I also say thank you. Right, we'll uh, we'll get to, so everybody has plus two defense until I go again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go for the eyes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Their constitution must be terrible. Their diet is awful. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And I guess that's everyone, right? Yeah. Um, so um, the tattooed man is going to remove the spear from the now deaded uh, cannibal, and he's going to uh, throw it at um, the man who's attacking uh, Charles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, you're like, you know, having a sword fight with this man, probably laughing or like going, aha, on guard or whatever it is. Yeah. And a spear like head just like appears out of his chest and he just like falls forward dead. Um, and the tattooed man will run up and just like push the spear through and then grab it on the other side. And uh, he'll, he'll sort of look at you and just smile with his healthy white teeth. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake my finger at him. And go, no, mine. He's like, Biscus. Mine. Biscus. Mine. Biscus. Mine. D- did we just learn his name? Uh, what does mine say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll clap you on the shoulder and be like, mine. <laughs> mine, yes, mine. No, next time. Don't kill mine. Good. Mine. mine. Um, and then you'll turn around and, um, yeah, ready his spear at uh, some of the men climbing up over the side. Um, okay, good. Glad we got that sorted out. So the three that are... Oh, no, they're dead. Oh, no, three that are left over uh, are going to um, run at, uh, I, I guess, uh, Jonathan. Can I get three defenses from you, please, sir? Yeah. Uh, so when attacked by multiple people, you yeah. So the next one is you get one less and then one less. So, so the first one is a normal eight, and, yeah, and then the next and one is negative, negative one, one, and the next one is a negative two. Okay. Hmm. All right, so the first one uh, definitely harms you. Um, not a lot, though. Uh, basically, you just, you've just been surrounded by these men, um, and they, they start, like, just poking you with spears, basically. And the first one, like, gets you in the gut before you, like, like in the side. Um, before I was but probably... It... I was distracted reloading the blunderbuss. Yeah. And then suddenly spear jab. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the second one uh, narrowly, mis- uh, narrowly scrapes your, your, um, your chest. And the, the other one, like, you probably, like, wised up at this point and you, you dodge that one pretty easily, pretty handily. Um, the other three savages, uh, cannibals, are going to climb up over the side and ready their spears. And on guard. Next round. Um, I'd like to, to go first. I'd like to get ahead of, of Mr. Mr. Stabby Tattoo Smiley Man. Yep. Uh, so I'm gonna charge at the ones around uh, uh, Jonathan, and an actual charge, I believe I can do. Yes, you want to actually charge? Yeah, I can't remember what the. Uh, sure, I can tell you. Um, so uh, you gain a plus two bonus in your attack and may move up to half your normal uh, move before making the attack. You only roll. Uh, you may only roll your passive defense. Um, so that's fine. Yeah. Um, uh so um yeah so you just better get a plus two are you attacking the wakeful ones or the sleeping ones all the sleeping uh, ones are dead yeah all the oh sleeping okay ones sweet yeah they, they were uh, they were blunderbust along with jessica okay yeah all right great <laughs> four okay charles why so so many fours 
Uh, yeah. Um, so you just sort of run, try and run one of these through, and uh, yeah, they take a little bit of damage. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna open fire on them. Um, is he right next to them though? <laughs> Uh, the, well, I mean, there's three fresh ones that just jumped over the side that you could aim at without too much hassle, so. Okay, cool. So he's, he's still at some remove from those three? Yeah, so there's three around, uh, Jonathan, and he attacked one of the ones that are attacking Jonathan. Okay, uh, so, just so just I'm gonna just them. strafe across them, um, right. a minus two. Uh, yeah, probably minus two to hit all three, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm specialized in rifles. Is a rifle an SMG or is that? Yep. It is? According to the uh, book. Cool. That's fine. Um, all right then. Defense. Goo. We'll just roll one defense for all. Uh, you know what? I'll roll all three. You might get lucky. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, no, oh you're, you're rolling them individually. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll roll them individually because you know, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, with a one, you you hit one of them, and he gets pushed back into the beam. But you know, now you've just have their attention. Um, so, uh, Jarius, what do you want to do? Well, I think I need to apply some, you know, magic on Jessica. Just kind of make sure she doesn't die. All right. So at this point, she's at negative one with her wounds. Um, so that's what your. Uh, how does healing work in this game? Is it? I always forget how to do this shit. Um, I, I every success I get mm. heals I, a little. I know. I, I understand that your successes mean that, but is there is the difficulty how much health they have to recover? No, I, I, I don't. I don't think that's the case. Um, I think. I think it only. Uh, only comes into play like when you go like when you go to negative i think it's three i think they die um i'll have to look it up again it's been so long since i played this but let's say that you just get the negative one for her uh being in critical condition and what's the difficulty uh five uh yeah. shit okay so how do you how do you like fix like because her like you like i don't know you open up her shirt or whatever and we get that fucking scene of like you know slightly sexy but not really because it's like you know you're applying first aid to uh, uh, a woman um and her body is just riddled with shrapnel basically um so how do you how do you go about fixing this and uh, bringing her back to a state of uh um consciousness i guess or usefulness. Hmm. I have this fantasy of, of cobbling together within six seconds uh, an electromagnet to pull the shrapnel out. <laughs> you just you uh, have this powerful magnet that you keep with you to pull the shrapnel out. Yeah. No, I just. Um, uh, Best I can do without without uh, without any kind of adrenaline shots is just start pulling shrapnel out, mm -hmm. just throwing it like tossing it aside. Yep, yep. Um, she's probably rolling around, uh, you know, in pain or whatever, and um, yeah, I put my knee, I put my knee on her, and keep her in place. Yep. Um, and you know, you you remove all the shrapnel. Um, I guess you have some sort of like maybe, um, you have like a like a, a, a some sort of knife or something that you that you have heated up and you cauterize like the wound, the the shrapnel holes or something like that stop it from bleeding i guess i don't know like how how would you how would you close all that up or do you suture every single one well i have a um i have my meat cleaver very broad flat blade and i have I, and i i have a, a box of matches okay so I take it, and I guess for, is Fran Francis, you're not still down there, are you? Uh, I am, but I'm heading up the stairs. But there, there's a bunch of like we just shot some cannons, so that's gonna have some. Yeah, some there's heat some there's heat, heat, the heat up this meat cleaver, and then just like you know, you know, press uh, it into the wounds and stuff. Yeah, all around, 
it's gonna hurt but she'll live yeah uh so she's uh yeah she regains four hp basically uh because she has that negative one um and uh yeah she's alive and well uh she's probably pissed but uh you know things happen in combat sometimes so maybe she won't be we'll see um all right, I guess uh, Jackson, you're the last person to act. Yep, I'm heading up with my Luger, and mm-hmm. uh, first first one I have a sh- clear shot on. I'm taking it. Go for it. Take a take a shot. Is it still minus two? Or no. No, no, no. This okay. was just like the distance to hit those ones in the distance. So. Okay. Standard five. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm, specialized. Cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, you apply some uh, pressure with a bullet onto their skin, and it goes in. Nice job. Uh, wounds all okay. round. Um, I'm not really keeping too tr- too much detailed track. I've got an idea of who's hurt what. So, um, you know. Um, I guess it's like that that feeling when you get off a trampoline and you try to jump on solid ground. It just kind of feels like you're going nowhere. Yeah. After buying cannons, that's what a luger feels like. Pew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I can I get a defense roll from one from Francis, uh, two from Jonathan, one from Charles, and two from Gideon. I don't have my active, right? No, you're just passive. So remember, if you got a subsequent rolls that you have a negative one. Um, nice, you've done that perfectly. I like it. All right, so Jonathan, your twos. Uh, we'll do yours first. Um, so... First one is for the first two are for Jonathan. Okay. Um, so what did you get? You got a five and a four. Okay. Yeah. You. F- uh, so the first one you take one damage. Second one you take two damage. Um, so total of three. What are you on right now? uh that brings me up to four four okay you're still pretty good then um who is next uh i guess gideon will do yours next um so three and three so yours were four and two so you take um you take three damage as uh, one of the spearmen lands uh, really well. Where would you like to be hit if it's not lethal? Um, I think probably like uh, between the shoulder blade and the and my ribs. Like I was turning, um, shouting down at Dejarius mm-hmm. uh, uh, and probably just caught it right there. Yep, nice. Uh, so he drives it home pretty well. Like sort of carries you a little bit. Uh, with how forceful he is, but uh, you've managed to push yourself off of the spear before he does too much damage. Uh, all right, so let's do let's do Jackson next. Um, so you have two uh, two successes on your roll, so you only have one attack. Uh, so you take three damage as this as the man that you shot uh, wheels around and swipes at you, uh, leaving a gash across your chest, I guess. Um, Sorry, three damage? Three damage, yes. Okay. They're specialized, so. Cool. Um, and the last one is Charles. Um, for one damage, right? No, yes, one damage. Yep. Um the man that you stabbed in the side just like swings it low at your feet and maybe cuts across your uh, your shins, basically. Um, Got a lot left in the tank. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, next round, fellas. 
How many of these fools can I get within 10 feet? Because if I can pull defense off of any of them, obviously I should leave with uh, that. I would say about, uh, you can get um, two of them, because two of them are looking at you. Um, the other one, you would have to gain his attention somehow. But he's sort of... Oh, sorry, wait. Uh, we, we forgot about the, the friendly savage. Uh, he is going to... Uh, he's going to jump on uh, mine and uh, attack the guy that attacked you. Um, so as he attacks, uh, your, uh, attacker, Charles, uh, he screams mine. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, four. And this guy, you've put one damage on. So if he does more than three damage, it will kill him. Um, uh okay i don't think he specialized uh he is okay cool so he does three damage killing him and and then he he, he looks at you and he goes he puts his hand on his shoulder and says mine viscous wait he did that to my guy yeah again yep oh it's 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 like a primitive woodbury but incompetent uh so yeah um now it's now it's the actual turn of the players again so all right i will uh try to uh stun them um any three. adjustment to difficulty uh no it's still three so oh actually for these guys these are new guys so it's still three yeah okay all the other ones <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, they're out for three turns, and they lose their defense, their active defense. So, good job. I I assume you're a little angrier this time, though. So, is it any different from how you normally do it? Um, I just say, raised in the abyss, and you have seen nothing like us. And just, <laughs> just wow, <laughs> like casting light across all of them. I like it. I like it. Um. All right, yeah. Uh, they are, you know, they, they start blinking erratically um, as you do that. Um, who would like to have their turn next? Yes, I, I will. Charles. Uh, so I, I sheathe my sword stick. I turn around and square up to uh, Woodbury. And I say, uh, no, you're not understanding, old chap. You don't get in the way of a fella when he's in a man or man duel, you see. And then I pull out my pistol and I side shot at just maybe <laughs> at a savage. Yeah, no, yeah. Just while, while I'm arguing with him. These are one of the ones that are attacking um, attacking uh, Jonathan, so. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll for damage, please. Do, 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 because of the description, do I need to do a, you know, is it just standard shot? Yeah, it's a standard shot. Yeah. Okay, sweet. You, you're, you're just adding some narrative flair. You just, you just, yeah. you just, you just flavor towning it right now. Not that it fucking matters anyway. You're trash, no, no matter how we look at it. So. Well, I'm not. I'm not really specified for pistols. Yeah. Um. Like basically, he's too busy fighting Jonathan to even notice that you fired at him. Yeah. I just, I just. <laughs> and he just sort of looks at it and he goes. Hmm. Mine. Good. So we're on the same page now. Hika. I'm going to assume that's yes. Um, so he will... Um, yeah. Uh, who would like to have the turn now? Oh, shoot at the one that attacked me. Yeah, go for it. Um, classic Luger. Classic Luger. Seven. Oh, that's a pretty good one, man. I like it. Oh yeah, you fucking blow his brains out. He's like, he... <laughs> just like under the chin because he's like close to yeah. the spear. Yeah, he's like you know, coming in to bite your nose or something, and he's just like <laughs> brain matter out the top. Yeah, I like it's it. It's the same shot from last episode of the gore getting spoiled. <laughs> you just reuse it. You have like the, the the same shirt you did like two episodes ago, but it's different now. You know, yeah. same shot, just saving on footage, yeah. Um, all right, uh, I guess, uh, Solomon, what are you attempting to do here? 
Because I got to get up there. Gun, ready. Shoot. Shoot, yeah, go for it. I assume you're going to shoot at one of the ones that are attacking Jonathan? Yeah. Okay. Hey, all right. Six. Nice. Yeah, that's a kill. Just pop your head up. Uh, bloody from uh, saving Jessica's life. Um, holding the, Like, you're holding this Luger with a bloody single hand, I guess, right? And he's just, you know... I imagine me and, are me and Francis, like, next to each other on the stairs, and I'm... Yeah. Uh, a little bit taller than he is, so he's like one step above me. Yep. Pretty... Yeah, the same height, right. basically. Yeah. Nice. Um, Jonathan, there is still one. Uh, you still have one person attacking you right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make very deep eye contact with him and see if he realizes what it means that I'm pointing this blunderbuss at him at this close range. Um, so he has a look in his eyes that you're familiar with. Um, Maybe uh, you used to you've you've done some capture work uh, before uh, of like jaguars or something like that, um, you know, for circuses or uh, uh, black market dealers, you know, whatever it is that it was that you had. And when it, like you used to take ships, like uh, boats and stuff like that, because it was easier to smuggle them into the countries that you had to get them into. Um, and a lot of the times, the animals would get malnourished and. Um, this look in their eyes that they had is one of just like, I could eat you and everything else around here right now. This man has the same look in his eyes right now that that Jaguar had that one time. So what you're saying is he isn't aware of his imminent demise. Gotcha. Pretty much. It's a, it's a little disappointing. I'd rather a little bit of fear, but it's very animalistic kind of right now. So yeah. Yeah. Hunger is gripping this man. Well, now death gripping him. Twelve. I'm not gonna even roll a defense. He's just like he's there one minute and the next minute he's not. It's just like just just gets splashed onto uh, onto. You know that um, scene Francis. from <laughs> you know that scene from um, Terminator when she's hanging onto the chicken wire fence and the nuclear bomb goes off. Mm. Yeah, like that, except no skeleton left over. Just like. Just... Good. Can I have? Can I spend a style point to have a hit, Francis? Like just splash all over him. <laughs> and the same scene gets used again. What yeah. happens same. is it's like going hit. for it's going for Solomon. Solomon recognizes it, grabs the crook of my neck, and like uses me as a human shield. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll play I'll pay a style point for that. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Sweet. You successfully <laughs> made your friend moist with the blood of your enemies. Um. Again. And it's the same shot as before. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, there we go. Nice, good. You'd use the style points, and I mean, you know, I guess that's that's everyone, yeah. Uh, so the uh, friendly neighborhood uh, tattooed man is going to uh, jump on the target that you attempted to shoot before, um, Charles. I mean, I did shoot him, he's dead. No, you missed him. Uh, no, you missed. I didn't look, he must be. I clearly uh, hit him i shot someone died that's what happens exactly yeah so unless this guy rolls poorly oh yeah no um there's a lot going on right now and this man successfully like uh parries the spear coming at him um and you know he's like he, he's like mine <laughs> like <laughs> as he's doing that yeah um all right, and now these guys are going to have a turn. So the uh, cannibal is going to attack the uh, savage. Um, oof, that's pretty nasty. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, yeah, he takes two damage. Uh, aren't the uh, other guys specialists? Wouldn't that be a four? Uh, yes, you are... 
No, it is... Yes, so they take one damage instead of two. Yes, that yeah. makes sense. Um, uh, and... Well, I guess the two around Gideon are no longer attacking in attacking mid state. Um, and the ones attacking everyone else has been dealt with. So yeah, that's their turn. I step out of the way again, this time like retreating down the stairs, spitting blood and just say, <coughs> gentlemen, and like wave towards Hyde. And uh, reload. Can I? Uh, I'm going to g walk up to one of the stunned guys. Mm -hmm. Can I spend a spell point just to slap him to wake him up and then attack? I mean, you don't need to spend a style point to do that. If you want him to no? not be... If you want to have a gentlemanly duel with this man, you can. Absolutely. Yeah, In fact, I will, uh... I will give you a style point. For purposefully being an, uh, an idiot about combat oh, and going for it. Thank yeah. you. Aha! See, it wasn't so silly to spend that stall point earlier. I got one back. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll draw my stick sword, uh, slap the guy awake, uh, wait till he's you know gathered his senses, and then stab at him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Jolly good. Uh... Oh, no, that's, yeah. Hmm. It's probably the best roll you've done all night. Yep. It's no good, though. But then again... <laughs> <laughs> no I should have waited for him to wake up. I should have just slapped him and then stabbed him. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Jonathan, Gideon. Oh, Gideon, you've done your turn, I guess. Uh, Solomon, Jackson, Hyde. So how many are left right now? There's uh, there's two. two two that are you know, hey, there's two left. Uh, and no, there's, there's three. two with no defense, no uh, active defense. Uh, I just woke one up. He just actually. woke one up. Okay. There's, there's, oh, of there's course. one. There's one <laughs> with his head in the clouds. One's fighting the tattooed man. Another's fighting Charles. Gideon, are you gonna live? Uh, it's for the moment. Um, I finish them. At who? Which one? Are you helping Charles or are you helping uh, the tattooed man? I'll help Charles, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Good call, because that's the one that's awake. <laughs> so go ahead and take a shot for me, please. Six again. Okay, so this guy is taking a negative one on his attack. Oh, defense. Because this is his second. All right. Yeah, he's dead. You just like Charles. You're just like on guard. You have like a sword fight, and then his brains just go as his head is fucking rocked to the side as a bullet goes through his skull. He steadies his one arm Solomon. on your shoulder. <laughs> just. Uh, okay, um, Francis. I'm gonna help out the tattooed guy and leave leave the stunned dude for the blunderbuss. <laughs> okay, go for it. So, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what we're talking about. Give me that fucking high rolls. He dead. Good job. Um. <clears throat> So you shoot this man, um, and the blood of the savage uh, coats the other savage, I guess. Um, Revenge! <laughs> and when he falls down on the ground, he sort of looks at him, like, kind of surprised a little bit as to, like, he was not sure why he died because he didn't stab him. Um, and now there's one left. Well... I think I'm probably just going to lean back against the railing. Like, Come on, Chuck. Actually kill one, mate. All right. I'm going to walk up to it. I'm going to slap it. Oh, and here we go. It's not your turn right now. Oh, 
Shit! <laughs> so, uh, after, in, after being a little bit surprised at this happening, the uh, tattooed man uh, will walk over to you, Charles, and he will look at the other man who's standing still, and he looks back at you, and he's a little confused, so he's just going to walk up, put the spear to his neck, and slowly push it in. Um, and we'll see what happens. Uh, yep. He's sent gargling, uh, uh, down as the spear exits his neck and he dies. And then he just goes back to you. Uh, the tattooed man goes back to you and he's like, looks at you with a, like, a, sort of like a face of like fellow warrior, you know, like, um, and just says, mine. Biscus. And I'm Woodbury shaking my head. You were outplayed by a savage. <laughs> um. Yeah, and uh, I think that's where we'll take up this break. The deck is proliferated with arrows and the corpses of uh, hungry, hungry cannibals, um, as well as the blood of uh, your attacks, uh, the mist of gunpowder, and uh, you know the sounds of battle and screaming is all but over. Uh, the light d dies from the uh, chemical fire that you lit, or the chemical explosion that you lit. Um, and you survey the, the carnage outside of the ship and there is this mutilated bodies all up and down uh, the coast. Um, so, what do? There's boxes in the, in the hull, so I'm going to go down and see if I can open a box. Yeah, so um, these are stamped with a merchant stamp. Um, and Oh, what I... Can I roll to see if I recognize a merchant stamp? Because that's probably well documented. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, this ship is a merchant vis vessel. Um, so you've already but like, technically... This... Mm -hmm. But the stamp itself is probably more more specific to, like, this this company rather than, like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, from what you can... Uh, it's, a good, it's, a, it's a good idea. I don't have those answers for you right now, but um, okay. if you want to make that um, roll anyway, we can um, note it and get back to you about that. Sure. That's just straight history? Yeah, history, yeah. At difficulty eight. That's what we said last time. So. Cool. Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So basically, what you understand about this ship, it's the 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 Mary uh, Celeste. Um, uh, you know that um, you know uh, if there's like uh, down in the underbelly here, there are like papers and stuff still. Um, they're a bit waterlogged and a bit destroyed, but uh, you know, uh, from what you can gather about the contents of the boxes without having to look into them. Um, from what you know about what the ship was carrying, because that's what history is. Spe very specific knowledge about everything in the past. Um, this was uh, a ship uh, that was uh, between uh, heading uh, to Portugal and the Azores. I'm not sure what the Azores is. Uh, Az Azores. Did you say the Mary Celeste? Yeah, the Mary Celeste, yes. Okay, cool. No idea how it ended up in Hollow Earth and Haiti, but whatever. <laughs> Look, man, this is, uh, this is, yeah, I shit you not, 
in the book, I'm pulling this from the book, not from my head. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's only like one oh, of no, the most it, famous ghost ships ever. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Parallel dimensions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or maybe half was in Hades and half. Was oh here, yeah, so. that's true. There's only half a ship here. Mm -hmm. When I when I was healing Jessica, this may be a weird question. Did I notice anything strange about her physiology? Hmm. Uh, let's get a let's get another roll. Like a like um, let's see here. Uh, let's get a perceptive perception check from you. Um, and uh, you have a specialization in medicine, yeah? Oh, I have a general medicine skill. That's eleven. Okay, so we'll we'll use the perception though. Um, oh, you, mm, I mean, what what exactly do, do you mean? Anything specific about her body? Like, do you want to? Because I mean, you didn't really have an opportunity to sort of like pat her down or nothing. But do you mean like just about like her like like uh, what exactly were you looking for? Because uh, there is something, but I just want to know what where you're looking. So is she still out? Yeah, I mean, after you did your stuff, she is definitely unconscious now. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sitting there, observing. Basically, I'm interested in um, healing function. Yep. Uh, and her, like blood pressure, stuff like that. Okay. Are you gonna take her arm? I'm thinking about it. I'm okay with this. I say, the um, doctor, if you please, he's still here. If you need a limb, take his. No, just calm down. I'm just, I'm, right now I'm just observing. So I just want to know if there's anything interesting or different, non-human, about her physiology. Uh, non-human? No. It's 100% well, it's think... human. Um, <laughs> sorry, could you repeat that? In a lot of people. Uh, sorry, I, I missed all of that. Can you repeat that, sorry? Anything that is out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary. All right, let me just uh, give a quick... Hearing in, what do you know about the healing properties of where we are? Anything besides that? Okay, uh, well, obviously, the first thing that you notice is uh, how um, uh, attractive her form is. Um, it's. I need to actually point that out. Um, uh, and, um, let's see here. What else can I tell you about that? Um, mm. so her healing property, um, is actually, uh, very similar to yours. Um, so the only person here that has sort of retained so here's something go ahead and make a, a medicine check for me and this is just general right this i just want to know how much you've noticed about this okay no no perception is actually good we'll, we'll use that um so what you've actually noticed here um is the only real person that's retained scars in hollow earth is um, Gideon and Dr. Pap. And who? The, the, the doctor? Yeah, the doctor, yes. Gideon actually has a lot of scars in the times that, in the, in the couple of weeks that you've been here in Hollow Earth. Um, but everyone else that's been attacked, um, not so much with them. Okay, well, I noticed, I noticed this and I... I, uh, I... Getting a, a word over here. I um, sort of think that it's going to be about taking her arm uh, <laughs> incorrectly. And I say, I won't let you mutilate her. Bonk! And I like slump hard against the wall because I'm still really wounded. Yeah. Um, and just sort of like stagger back to my feet and follow you um, cautiously. Because I think you're, you're going to be like, Help me! <laughs> I, I need it. I need an, a hot woman's arm to stick on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, She's so attractive that even if you removed her arm, it would not remove from her allure. Like that's the game is very specific about. That. <laughs> yes. 
so I, but I'd... would it make Solomon more attractive? By yeah. process of ownership, yes. <laughs> they... Well, um, yeah, so I so I know for a fact that that Gideon has scars on him somewhere. Oh yeah, he has like uh, raptor scars on his back. Um, his wounds that he received from this battle um, haven't recited, and um, any wounds he obtained outside of Hollow Earth before coming here, like from the train fight and stuff like that, they haven't gone away either. Yeah, only the raptor is really like that was on the front, um, but the this new one in my back is serious, and it's not it's not doing any mutant healing factor. Um, I say, do you have do you have do you have wounds from before we came here can, that you can show me? Yes, um, you can see he has a. Uh, He's got the, the tattoos of uh, coins on his eyes, uh, of which a percentage is um, raised scar tissue, as eyelids. Um, they're only and, visible when he blinks. Yeah, as a man who actually has that from his tattoos, it's not fun. It's not good. Anyway, yeah. Um, and he has assorted other um, cuts. Um, he was not particularly well equipped to go on an adventure in the desert before he met all of you. Um, so there, there's by now uh, quite a tapestry of scars. I, I imagine I imagine Hyde would have a number of various injuries. Not really. I mean, he's been shot and skewered, but he doesn't seem I, to retain. I have some, I have some fresh wounds. I yeah, but know. what I'm what I'm saying is there is there is a difference between the way that you retain scars and a difference between the way that Gideon retains scars. And to answer your question, the same thing is is uh, evident with Jessica as well. As Gideon? As everyone else, aside from Gideon. Gideon's the only one, and Pap, that don't have this factor. Yeah, she's like, she's like the rest of you. And Gideon has said to you before that he saw all your vascular systems glowing and all that and did not see that in himself. Did he just freeze? I can't tell. I can't tell. <laughs> he he does was, sometimes go into contemplative. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for him trances, to like but... come back from that, but maybe he did freeze. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, we were wondering whether or not you actually froze, Graham, because you, you froze like this. And we're like, oh, is he just thinking? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh I will maintain this information in my head, and uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ask. Um, is there any particular reason? I mean, does it have something to do with Atlantis or heritage or something? Why you heal and or scar different from the rest of us? I don't know. know. My my grandparents told me stories of Atlantis. They they claim to be Atlantean. Um, as to why you uh, glowed when I looked at each of you when we first met, I, I still don't know. There's something special about you, and it's special about her, too. I point at Jessica. And the doctor? Nothing. Uh, brilliant, but uh, I shrug. All right. I am. Um, I leave, and I, you know, I just walk away, and I'll be, you know, alone with my thoughts because I want to be. You, st you stand on the, the front of the ship and you just like put your arms out in the wind. You just like, there's no wind, but you know what I mean? Like, you, you Titanic um, yourself. It's really hot up there. I, I stay down below. Okay, yeah. Qu question. Yes. We're on, a, we're on a cliff, right? Yes. All right. Let's chuck the bodies off. I mean, that makes sense. Easier than burying them or, or, or burning them. Leave them to the... They'll attract in. predators if we leave them laying out, so... Yeah. Uh, what about the, the girl? Her two? Uh, She's basically dead, right? No. No, apparently. Dejarius fixed her up. 
Okay, well, you can look after her then. Jolly good. Shall we get rid of these guys? Yeah, I'd, I think I'd probably help clear the corpses. You created most of them. <laughs> Actually, uh, I believe it was the little cannon boy downstairs that did all the work. Yeah, it'll take us hours to collect all those pieces. We'll just leave those for the predators. Are they in pieces? Oh or... yeah, he fucking shot cannons at them, man. They're fucking okay. There's like bits. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing that. I'm gonna like try to crack open a crate to see what's in these things. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let me tell you. Okay, so, uh, you spend your time documenting or going through what's in there. Uh, uh, extra sails for the ship. Um, like, uh, you know, fabric, that sort of stuff. Silk, whatever you want to call it. Uh, food and water supplies. Uh, a Ooh. lot of the cargo is still intact, so we're talking like, you know, uh, like like wood uh, cabinets and shit like that, you know, just household uh, furniture, um, uh, and um, some of them being broken up for like fires and stuff in here. Um, but you know, uh, most of that stuff is still there. Um, all the navigation instruments and whatnot uh, that they used are missing. All the paperwork is missing. Um, there is a, a, a log book um, of their travels. Uh, and yeah, um, that's about it, really. Yeah. I'll take the log book for sure. And probably like the sails we'll use for scrap. They're Cause... very, very, very heavy and very large. Um, we'll cut them. Yeah, they, if you want to take if you want to take a portion of that, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but it's full replacement like, mast and like sails and stuff. canvas pretty much like thick canvas yeah oh yeah and it's a lot of it too um yeah so like we'll take a swath because the way they're we're getting injured it's probably good to have like some sort of fabric that we can actually that's a good point i'd probably like cut some strips off one of them and then go to solomon and ask him to bandage me up because i'm actually pretty heavily wounded yeah same yeah, I, I get in, in that line very sheepishly, like not making eye contact with him because I was arguing with him before, but like I, I like limping the whole way. So, um, Charles, you're walking around doing whatever it is that you're doing. Um, Throwing savages off the cliff, yes. Um, and uh, the tattooed man is literally following you like a shadow. Wonderful. Is he helping with the throwing bodies off? Uh, he watches you for a bit and sees what you're doing, um, and then he will, he will help you. Oh, sure. Thank you, Woodbury. I'm just going to roll uh, medicine for these guys as well. Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Six, six will, uh, 15? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Six will help, uh, for fix anyone, I guess. Except, Doc, how much have you lost? Uh, four lethal. Okay, yeah. Six will fix wow. anyone, so. Okay. Are those separate checks, or does he fix us both? Uh, yeah, so six and four. I'm guessing you both are fixed from that. And then yep. one more? Yeah, you're good. Everyone's good. Um, so I was just having a look. Let's get a apparently, lethal. yeah, apparently each success reduces a lethal to a non-lethal and then another success to reduce it to an uninjured basically yeah but uh the way that it goes in this one is once the scene finishes and you move on bashing just goes away pretty much so okay so i'm left still at one lethal damage yeah so like for example if you are oh, oh so it, it descales each one a couple of yeah. times I see what you're it'll, saying. It'll heal a lethal to a non-lethal, and then it'll heal that non-lethal. But that's like two successes. Mm -hmm. Well, I, is that including my lifesaver? Uh, is that what it's called? The talent? Your character heals one lethal wound per success. Oh, so yours just straight up heals them. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or, or two non-lethal wounds per success. So that's yeah, like there. like his his. The standard healing is different, but this one is... Um... Okay, I, I knew that there was something different about it, and yeah, I just wanted to double check. 
Mm-hmm. Just here normal. Cool. Your character heals one lethal wound per two successes. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll let Tajerius know that like there's supplies in these crates, like food, water, extra canvas that we can take swaths of or whatever. What kind of food? Like hardtack and stuff? Yeah, probably just like rationed dried meats. That can be good. Uh, let me let me find you. So. Maybe something that's preserved could possibly still be edible. I don't think anything else would be. I mean, the Mary's would... speaking not as Charles because Charles probably wouldn't know. But uh, Mary Celeste went missing, uh, like was found abandoned in eighteen. 18- like... 1780 something 1870 yeah. 1880 like it's it's been gone for a while that'd be a good like 60 years or so i'm not i'm i won't be partaking but if there's any booze in there that's probably still good it's a ship there's probably something at least one actually yeah there'd, there'd be fucking big jugs of rum somewhere there's got to be yeah sure fuck it yeah some rum in there <laughs> I mean, it, it, like, like it's, you know, that's pretty much everything, yeah. Mm-hmm. Should we proceed to the eagle-headed stone? From there, we can reckon Atlantis. Whatever. Well, yeah. all we got out of this, as far as I can tell, was that Charles has a new friend. That's, that's a win. Your team. Uh, so Charles, um, he stopped helping you and he's like, uh, he's like drawing, uh, with his spear in the, in the, like in the salt. Um, uh, have we done all the bodies or is there still more to do? Uh, you probably got some left. No, I'll, I'll keep going for now. He can draw if he likes, if it's important, I'm sure he'll come get me. All right. So you back on the ship with the conversation. At some point, I'm going to approach Jessica when she comes to. So I guess let me know if, when and if. Whenever, that whenever that happens, uh, she heals uh, just as fast as everyone else does. So um, she she comes to when she does. Um, uh, she's very sweaty, um, embarrassed that her shirt has been left open this entire time. Um, and the first thing she asks is, as she like pulls herself together, is just like, "How how long was I on?" A few minutes, but it feels like days. Oh, did you get a good look then? Jessica, I'm not interested. You and your friend there, and I gesture towards the doctor wherever he's been thrown. Uh, um, yeah, he he hid during the fight, and you know he's turned up like under the underbelly. Of, uh, sorry, in the cargo of the ship. Yeah, somewhere. Doctor Rodney. No one trusts you, and. You're increasingly a liability. I need you to speak very honestly about what you want and why we need to keep him alive. Pretty soon, the Jarius is going to use him for spare parts, and I'm sticking my neck out to protect you over and over. I'd rather not convince me otherwise. I'm like, just, I look exhausted. I'm not even making eye contact with her, let alone chest. And I'm just like, you know, uh, sort of halfway slumped against the wall. Like, uh, he's healed me up, but I'm still just out. Hmm. Um, can you give me, uh, do you have any sort of, like, uh, charm skills or, like, talking skills? Yeah, I mean, I've got about? empathy, um, and I've got a lot of charisma. Uh, I guess uh, pretty good charisma. Mm-hmm. Um, Why don't you give me a straight charisma roll, then? We'll see what straight happens. Straight charisma? Yeah. And uh, how do you, you were saying that you have to double this somehow? It, it doubles it automatically when you click the dice next to charisma, though. Oh, okay, cool. So and roll, then, rolling, you... yeah, rolling primary attributes will automatically double them. So... Um, and, uh, so the, the difficulty here is probably going to be a eight. Oh, geez. All right. Well, <laughs> cause, we uh, go. yeah, you're asking her to, you know, divulge, um, yeah, not okay. bad. yeah, that's, that's pretty fucking chunky actually. Um, yeah. And she's seen multiple times I have stood up for her and I'm just, I'm running out of, I'm running out of patience for this sort of like cryptic act where mm-hmm. she can play both sides and not really tell us anything. Like I need to know her agenda fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
uh, well, um, so she'll like, you know, do up her blouse and sort of pull you aside away from Pap and uh, say, look, you understand this is need to know basis, right? Yes, of course. All you need to know is that you do not want him to die or me to die. So you've said you're going to have to do better. I'm sorry, but you're a drain on resources, both of you. Need to know is not good enough. There's no rank down here. There's you, me, and the things we feed to dinosaurs. Look, we've known where you've been, right? We know everywhere where, well, when I say we, I mean, you know, the Thule know where you've been. They know everything about where you are at any time. And where are they now? No rescue seems forthcoming. Hyde is going to murder you. Wake up, woman. That's how they know where we are. Whenever a Thule agent dies, they know where they are. The moment that death happens. Empathy detect lies, <laughs> if you don't mind. Go for it, yeah. All right. Uh... What's the uh, DC? Uh, this will be a versus. Okay. So I am specialized in this. Okay, six. That might be uh, interesting to fight against. Um, so. Yeah, she already she already has shown that she can rock it. But I charismaed did, her. Whatever did you that roll means. at five? <laughs> you did. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so equal. Um, so she just looks at you and raises an eyebrow and is like, how do you think they show up wherever you, you are? The train in Jerusalem? Come on. Do you think they just showed up out of nowhere to pick on a train? You need to make amends with Mr. Hyde. He shot me. Not the other you way around. Hold a gun on him, which is why you lost it in the first place. I did your time I'm unconscious. trying to stop a legion of Nazi soldiers rolling deep and giving you all the thrashing that you deserve. That we deserve. Great. Uh, I just You're about as fully... subtle as a bull running through a china shop, Gideon. You and your friends. There. Touche. And I, I, like, walk away from her, back up to the decks, and say to the others, if we kill Jessica or the doctor, she says the Thule will be instantly aware. Um, of course she does. Yes, exactly. I admit I don't know for sure. I'm trained to detect lies, but she's the best. Well, how about we kill the doctor and find out? And then we can kill her if they don't come. 50-50. Honestly, I'm surprised she's still alive. Why don't we chuck him off the cliff? Wait, um, Solomon, do you need his arm? Um, if we're going to chuck him, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, what do you say? I love that we're already considering this as an option. Like, yeah, you know, now that I think about it. So, um, um, I, did you go back to the ship, Charles? Or what did you do? Well, I assume they assume that I've been done with the body moving by now, and <clears throat> except for the parts, which I can't be asked to pick up the parts. Mm -hmm. Not if I'm the only one doing it, because apparently no one else is. This is my last ditch, uh, Dejarius, but he's a man of science. I think it is his work that allows them to walk through walls over great distances. There is some value in his mind, but... That's the end. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say it again. If you all want to kill him for the sake of a test, I am too tired to stand in your way. No wolves out here, old boy. <laughs> Honest, like, to me, he, just like 
just like uh, Gideon just said to Jessica, he's, I mean, he really is dead weight. He really is a drain on anything, resources. I see him providing nothing. I mean, he's a captor, right? Like, that's, 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 that's the conundrum. A captee, sorry. Captive. Captive. Captain. <laughs> Captain. Yeah, the the closest thing to a paladin we have in our party is absent minded. <laughs> so that guy might be fucked. I mean, the best we could say for him is that if we do get attacked by something dangerous, more dangerous, we can always leave him as bait. Okay. Well, basically, the way, where I stand is if if somebody else is gonna is gonna kill him, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sentence him. Is there some way to get the knowledge out of his head? If that's the only thing keeping him alive, big rock. Yes, yeah, if we could make contact with them ever again, yes, there, there are ways. But we, the problem is we don't have time for a lengthy interrogation. We, we don't have much to offer him. It's a survival scenario. Fra I don't... We've, got, we've got a couple cases of booze. Fr Francis, Francis, can't you do your... Uh... Like hypnotism. Yes. Can't you, can't you do your hypnotism to the, the stuff? I have no idea what you're talking about. You're a magician. Right? Sorry. Is there some kind of spell you can use? I think at this moment, I'm just like, we have a couple of cases of booze. We could loosen them up, get them drunk, get them talking. In the meantime, so. I'll like shove, shove like a bottle towards Gideon. I'm like, you look like you need a drink. And then I'm going to go up and start talking to our savage. Oh, I yes. Gratefully surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Just take one drink. Well, what's so where is Doctor Pap? Is he still down below hiding? Yeah, he's he's like sitting next to the entrance, sort of thing. Just being quiet. He's been very quiet since you guys took his finger. He's been he, he was even quieter before that, All right? But he's been especially quiet since you took the finger actually kind of forgot about that mm. he's a he's a little like uh you know he's a willing captive basically if that makes any sense like he goes where he's told he does what he's what he's told he doesn't talk or say anything um yeah that was the episode where solomon was the baddie mm. I guess i'll go down and lead him up like come on, come on get up here bring him up on deck Pull my knife out and cut the ropes that are binding his hands. Mm -hmm. Cut the ropes that are binding his feet. Mm -hmm. Give him Jessica's gun, making sure that she sees me giving it to him. Because mm -hmm. I trust him more mm -hmm. and tell him that if he doesn't make himself useful, we're going to kill him. Yeah. And the doctor over there is going to cut him up. You give the gun to, the do to Dr. Pap? Yep. Uh, he shoots himself in the face. Cool. Problem solved. Either there he was are. going to shoot himself or he was going to shoot one of us and I was going to kill him. Either way, problem solved itself. Oh, shit. So, like, the moment that um, he's like, you know, we get a little bit more than just like, he shoots him with a fire. Ah, ah. He's, um, he's got his hands bind and you cut him and he sort of like, you know, blinks a little bit. Um, and he, you cut his feet and he, he blinks even further. And, you know, he rubs his wrists a little bit. And he sort of looks around like this is a bit of a trick or something like that. And uh, um, uh, then you like give him the gun. What, what do you say to him exactly? Uh, if you don't make yourself useful, like going you, you to kill start you saying and the that, doctor is going to cut you up. You start like if you don't make yourself useful and he just boom straight away, like he doesn't even let you finish and he just like shoots himself in the face. There's no hesitation whatsoever. Um, and his dead body just hits the ground and, and blood just like pools out of his body. Um, Jessica, runs up, then. Jessica runs up the stairs and she's like, Oh, what have you done? 
Uh, technically, it was him. You turned. <sighs> Well, I guess, I guess All right, we'll we you. need to go right now. Uh, anywhere doesn't matter. Excellent not idea. Here. Anybody fancy fancy a visit to the, the rock shaped like an eagle? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna call over to Savage. Like, did I pick up that he was calling himself Biscus? I mean, you can pick up. He he said two words in English that yeah. you can pronounce. I guess Biscus and mine. So I'm just gonna take a fifty fifty chance on like. Call Biscus and see if he looks over. He Name's does. not mine. Yeah. I just like gesture him over, see if he knows that. Mm. And, like, I've already like I've made a a drawing and like of the the mountain and just like point at it. And then if it's in the distance, can I point to that? Like, uh, can we see the mountain from here? Yeah, you can. Yeah. So I'll just point to that and be like, there. Take take us there. Like Please. he he sort of looks at it and he's like, he he points to the mountain and he's like, uh, do get stuck up. Can we montage me learning his language? <laughs> <laughs> do it with a montage. <laughs> um. Yeah, how much time do you want to spend on this? Like, what are you what are you attempting? To, how are you attempting to learn this? while walking i assume yeah we're just like walk and talk why are we leaving what's the problem well like we probably have to like camp or i don't know can i get a new uh detect lies on jessica uh now that we have actually put her theory to the test um because she so, she seems so emphatic now she, yeah so like so i don't like i don't even know that you might need this but the moment that she sees what's happened, she runs down to the to where the food is or whatever, and she grabs like some sail and rips it, and she just starts like knapsacking as much of the food as she can get. Uh, she she takes like a big gallon of water or whatever that they come in, and she just like grabs it and she uh, basically just jumps over the side of the ship if you allow her, and she starts booking it for the for the trees like. As fast as her little legs can carry it, if you let her. Shall I shoot her? Actually, no. Hyde, maybe you should shoot her. Should I shoot her? No. Shoot her. No. All right. Not it, yet. So man. she'll stop Not halfway, right? And she'll turn back and she's like, are you idiots coming or what? I believe her, at least as far as this goes, yeah. to the mountain. And I, I... I will start, like wearily limping away uh, uh, the same kind of general direction. I aside to Woodbury and I say, I think she's talking to you. I mean, I, I look at I look at the doctor's body forlornly because I'm not prepared to do complex surgery at the moment. I mean, you could bring the body with you. I, I can't do that. I can barely carry anything. I'm not going to, you know, I, anybody want to carry this guy's body for a, a, who knows an indeterminate amount of time? Sure. All right, hoist it up there. I'm I'm gonna take the gun back though. <laughs> he yeah, was smallish, the smoking right? gun, the, yeah. The doctor. Yeah, I'll help you carry him, actually, uh, Solomon, because you saved a couple of lives and uh, on faith, and I want you to get your arm back, uh, even if it's this weird white dude's arm. Yeah. Well. So I I chuck the doctor off the ship, and then I stop climbing down. Yeah, I assume he gets a bit battered, but it's fine. Okay. Out of curiosity, <laughs> is it a linguistics thing or an empathy thing to help to start learning this language? That's a good question. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be linguistics, but let me just double check on the skills. Because if it takes like pumping new stuff, like new XP into it, then I'll do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Um, uh, 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 uh. Okay, it covers encrypting, writing, medicine, translating spoken languages. Okay, so it is linguistics. Um, uh, you may specialize in the following areas. Uh, uh, translation is a specialization of uh, linguistics. Um, 
So you would need to be specialized in linguistics translation if you want to attempt to translate. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, dancing and miming and what have you. All right. Well, that's something to work towards then. All right. Um, and unless you're gonna, unless you're gonna let me like roll the statistics now to like get him to help us. Because I do have a linguistic skill. It's just going to be what like body language it? pointing or whatever. It's six. Hmm. Or like the, the rating is six. The level is one. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Um, you, you, li you literally are barely even fluent uh, in another, in one language, in the second language. So like, um, yeah. Like, yeah, it's uh I mean, you're, you're an intelligent man, but um, you're intelligent in history and uh, mythos and stuff like that, at least from sure. what your character sheet is. So you can, you can attempt to converse with this man and, you know, you would probably have the most success out of everyone, but you're definitely not the type to like, you know, sit down with him and break down his language um, and break down that barrier, right? There's always going to be a barrier unless, unless you're trained and specialized in it, so... Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to like body language and mime and like try to get him to help us. Hmm. So like mountain walking us there, you know. Um, he, he sort of like nods slowly and he points in the other direction and he does the same thing like walking. Like the other direction away from the mountain? Yeah. Well, He's a local. I think we should follow him. And Jessica's going the other way. Yep. So we should get Jessica. Follow the local. I just, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, look forlornly towards the eagle-shaped mountain because, in my head, right, like it's the way to Atlantis, but it was a long shot. It was just where we could see from the freaking vision. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I've gone out on a limb for these friggin' NPCs, so I, I just kind of nod wearily at you and turn around and <laughs> start following you and the local. Right. Is Jessica coming with us, or is she going towards the mountain? She's heading in towards the mountain. I call out to her and just say, Jessica, he's taking us another way. He knows this place we don't. It's up to you whether you want the protection of the group. Nah, she'll I, 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 I seriously side-eye eyed when I say protection of the group. No, she, she, like the moment you say that, she'll, she'll come back and say, like, only if we leave right now, because I ain't not staying here. And then she'll start like, like she was like, that direction? Mm-hmm. She'll start walking that direction. Just like I'll point the way they wanted. You said he was carving something on the deck with a spear. What was it? Uh, it's, in the, it's in the salt where the uh, where the the bowmen were. Can I see it now? Like, uh, I'm pretty Charles, sure I was you... the only one who saw it. Yeah, Charles, would you have told anyone about? No. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. It was probably like a fucking perfect map of the place. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. Every landmark pointed out. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was on the deck of the ship. No, no, no. So they were out throwing the bodies over the cliff. So. Thanks, okay. Charles. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Uh, I'm, following, I'm following the local. So, yeah, yes. that's that's where we'll end today's episode. We we do get, like, uh, you know, the credits roll, and then after the credits, Marvel style, um, we get, uh, uh, you know, uh, the command room in the Thule Society. Uh, <clears throat> basically, like... Um, we get like a, you know, a guy who's overlooking a map and like, uh, uh, basically the map starts to bleed in one area. Um, and he's like, what? Um, it's in German, by the way, like subtitled, um, Nani? No. Uh, uh, and, uh, he will, uh, <clears throat> go over to a commander who's like, you know, hat off, jacket off, uh, eating like a steak uh on like his like big command desk thing and out the you know his window 
there's like a legion of Nazi troops like uh, doing drills outside, you know, with like tanks rolling past and that sort of shit. Um, <clears throat> cause it's pulpy and you know, the Nazi forces is imaginable large, and uh, unimaginably large basically is what this is trying to show. Um, and he, he'll bust in the room and he the subtitles will say, we found him. Pat's come up. He did his duty and, uh, he'll, he'll take a napkin and, uh, you know, wipe his mouth. Um, the, the napkin is anagrammed, um, uh, 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 it's anagrammed, um, uh, D W I know W W. Um, and, um, he'll, he'll, he'll put the napkin on top of the plate on top of the steak and he'll just be like, then we have our key. Great. I want the troops ready in 10. It seems like we finally get to go to Hollow Earth. And uh, that's where we'll uh, end the, uh, the episode. So, yay! Uh, let's do some XP awards uh, for everyone. Um, good job today, by the way, fellas. Um, that was a lot of cannibals. <laughs> A lot of cannibals. Uh, so, uh, everyone gets one experience point for having a sweet cannibal killing session. Uh, everyone take one for facing dangers and surviving. Uh, everyone call take... this episode Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> Can I, uh, corpse Party. I like it. Uh, <laughs> no, it uh, what was something. Someone said something that was. Uh, that was uh, interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can remember it. Uh, everyone take a third one for uh, role-playing. Um, I want to give an extra one to, to Gideon um, uh, for role-playing, and I want to give an extra one to uh, uh, Charles and uh, Sullivan for role-playing as well. Um, uh, wisdom. Uh, oh, success. Uh, everyone take one for success so uh and wisdom uh, i want to give another one to uh solomon uh for his uh ideal uh for his uh outward thinking basically um he learned something critically important um and i'll give another one to uh uh to gideon as well for wisdom um all right uh in terms of style points I want to give uh, two to uh, uh, Francis um, for his use of cannon work. Uh, that pretty much saved the party. <laughs> so they wouldn't have to get deal with a hail of uh, arrows. Uh, I'll give another one to uh, Charles uh, for basically playing the idiot again. Good job. Um, uh, we'll give one to uh, Doc for being extremely lethal. Um, we'll give everyone can take one, uh, but we'll give uh, the, the ones for Gideon is for uh, his, um, I guess, continuing to keep his temperament that he's had in the past couple of episodes, and we'll give one to Solomon for staying to his medical duties and saving uh, his allies, I guess. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the episode, guys. Uh, Let's do some shout outs and wrap this bitch up. Drummer Boy, let's start with you. Hey, I'm Drummer Boy. I haven't been streaming music lately. I might do tomorrow morning. I'm doing a, uh, a Christmas, like a super cheesy ass Christmas song for Roleplay One Shot. Jesse Cox is doing like a, a really weird Christmas one shot. So I'm going to write some really weird music for it. Yeah. Do that tomorrow morning. Um, the Abyss song that I did is up on Spotify and iTunes and my YouTube now. I so need to add to that to the out. episode, okay. actually. I didn't do that last time. so. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much me playing Witcher 3 on the weekends. So if that's your jam, you can stop by and watch me be wowed by The Witcher 3 after playing through the entire series. The Witcher 3 is the best game in the series, hands down, no questions. Really? I, yeah. I have really good memories of the first one. Like, the first one was good, but the third one combines like 
the folklore and stuff that I liked from the first game mm-hmm. and a bit of the more like detective ish stuff from the second game. Yeah, the combat was really weak in the third one, in my opinion. It gets to the point where it's very route and it's just like, yep. Mm. Just yeah. you might as well put it on easy because it's the same shit the entire way through. Yeah. But it's doing a lot more of the folklore stuff, which I really like. I just ran across uh, Johnny the Godling last time. And oh, that's yeah, Johnny. Really yeah. Yeah. With the tongue. Yeah. Um, all right, Sheepy, where can people find you? Hey there, guys. I'm Sheepdog, Sheepdog Gaming on YouTube. Search for me, you can find me. Nice. Um, yeah, I had, uh, I had a lot of fun, and you know, I've got a new wood breathe, so nice. Uh, and Nullspeak, where can people find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at, at Nullspeak or on YouTube under just search for Dice with Death. You'll find my permadeath D&D game, which is still being released chunk by chunk. Nice, nice. Uh, Doc, what about you? Yo, you can find me. I, uh, I think we don't have Surge this week, do we? Uh, well, if only one of them's, one of you guys are out, uh, we'll just go ahead and do it. Okay. So, yeah, for uh, Shadowrun. And for board games, which I have no idea what we're doing this week either. Uh, hopefully we will get enough for uh, the Pandemic Legacy kickoff. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, if any of you guys want to join in for a, a Legacy, let me know. Um, you, I mean, we're looking for people who want to commit to 15 episodes because that's how many Legacy board games take to finish. Um, so... I mean, we could probably do two episodes a, a, a week sort of thing. So, uh, Is that two, Tabletop Sim? Yeah, Tabletop Sim, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. the second Pandemic Legacy, Pandemic Legacy Season 2 is out, and apparently it's fucking amazing. So, like, I we you got to do the first one before you can do the second one. <laughs> like, So, yeah, that's the plan, at least anyway. Um, and Graham, where can people find you? Always be making YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Making yep. flamethrowers. Making stuff. Making anything. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed tonight's episode of Die Party Abyss. If you did, uh, why not follow the channel on Twitch? And if you're feeling saucy, why not subscribe? Show your love. Join the cockpit. Get the best emotes on Twitch, hands down. Um, so a couple things. The first is, uh, we are still currently voting for the next fan party game, uh, which is going to be airing on, uh, January 6th. The last one we did on the 2nd of December was fantastic. It was Vampire the Masquerade. Um, it was a fantastic session. Had a lot of fun. And, uh, if you're a Twitch subscriber or a Patreon supporter of the $5 tier and up, you can get free access to those games and you can come play with us. It's a bit of a riot, so it'll be great. Uh, but if you want to vote on the next system that we're playing, head on to the stroll poll that I just dropped in chat or go check out the Discord for more information. Uh, tomorrow, we will likely be playing um, Dead Man's Crest, which is our Savage World game. Um, it really depends, though. Wreckage is a bit um, weird sometimes with uh, not doing something if even one player is missing, so we'll have to see how we go with that. Um, but other than that, uh, uh, I think the rest of the week should be fine. Um, as mentioned before, Board Games Buddha Bros on Friday. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of hours for the uh, daily stream. But until then, have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>